You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Don't touch it! Six. 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 God damn it. The number of the beast. Six, six, six. <laughs> six, six, seven. That's the, the number of the yeast. Yeah. <laughs> six, six, five. The neighbor of the beast. <laughs> That's Gary. That's Gary. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Gary is a sweet man. You leave him alone. No, Gary's the one that comes over to the 666 house and says, you turn that devil music down. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Gary. We forgot to invite Randy Travis. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, you might like these guys. They're really into history. and <laughs> Bruce just a, is really cool. They're just a bunch of nerdy little uh, English teens. <laughs> Are they that band with the monster? <laughs> 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 All right, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Couch Brotatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back to our King of the Hill episodes. I'm Alex. This is Cap. Morrison. And we're digging on into season six. Cap actually wound up binging a bunch of King of the Hill, so... I think yeah, he really? might know more about it than I do. I don't know about oh, that. Oh, shit. King, mm. It's just that nothing... Uh, sometimes you come home and you're just like, ah, I want to, want to try to watch something different. Like, what? And I, then you can't get in the mood for a lot of it, so your default at that point, you know, being six seasons that's at like this that, point into it, I'm just going to watch King of the Hill. That's why I like that new uh, option Netflix has. Just put on something. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. And then you end up watching something about, like, Mongolian throat singing. And it's just like, <laughs> huh, that's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Netflix. <laughs> yeah. And then they put all, like, cuties, and you're just like, ah, am I a pedophile now? <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> that and HBO. <laughs> HBO just don't give a fuck anymore. No, they don't. <laughs> you can like, watch on both of those shit. <laughs> Man, I fear we dig into season six and hell talking about the uh, knowing more since we had fun doing our horror Jeopardy. Maybe uh, on the Patreon we'll need to do a King of the Hill trivia off. Let's and, do uh, it. And, uh, Let's do it. Yeah, we could try. <laughs> try. <laughs> but if anything, at the end of the day, we'll find at least Josh maybe Carter. One. We'll find like one other person that like really knows a lot about uh, King of the Hill. I if anybody in the Discord's listening, please. Yeah, please. seriously. When you pull a gun on me, you better be loaded. <laughs> this ain't like horror movies, brother. <laughs> this King so of much the fucking, fucking Hill. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think a King of the Hill trivia off that would, would be, be fun. pretty fun. Yeah. If someone can beat me at King of the Hill, I will get a tattoo of Dale. Oh shit! Oh, oh shit! <laughs> I had a, I had the idea for the Halloween trivia. Uh-huh. Like if somebody beat, beat me at trivia, I'd get like a like a tattoo of candy corn right here. <laughs> <laughs> I think the posters was a better option there. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, it's a, a Dale quote scripted out with a quote of Pocket the uh, winners, <laughs> or no, it's the dealer's choice or the winner's choice. Yeah, of a Dale saying. <laughs> But my, my look would be like a fucking monologue. <laughs> well, you don't some, know who I am, and I, I know where you live. live. Hi, Dale. Sh- 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 yes. <laughs> the most woke motherfucker. <laughs> oh, God, Dale oh, dude, today. A picture of Dale Gribble with a fucking cigarette hanging in his mouth with a ribbon that says, stay woke. <laughs> with him wearing like a childish Gambino t-shirt. Yes. Oh, God. Stay woke. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get into season six. Uh, first episode, a very, very meme worthy talking about tattoos. Meme worthy tattoo episode. Bobby goes nuts. Bobby no, learns no. self defense. Yes. Yep. And this is a. Um, I forget uh, what 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 happens at the beginning that uh, gets, gets him into uh, <laughs> so so self defense training. Uh, I'm pulling from memory on this, but I believe it's uh, he's with Connie. He goes. He, uh, he goes to she's a slumber, slumber party. Yeah. And okay. she, he climbs through the window. 
and they're chain was on a song and he, they're, they're fucking with him because they're like take it off you know fuck and he takes his shirt off and he starts dancing that's right because then, bobby's just one of the girls yeah and she, yeah <laughs> and Chain Wasana song shows up and makes him eat dirt. Yeah. Chain Wasana song made me eat dirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bobby. <laughs> I know. And he had like no sympathy. He's just like, son. Well, you go to, well, son, you can do what I did. Go, go to, to the go Y. To, go to the Y because that's, that's, that's the go to for Uber fucking Hank. Is yeah. Go to the Y. That's where he learned how to play basketball. <laughs> like a bunch of shit. Which I would love to see young Hank the bully. Right. We did for a second. Yeah. But like in chunks. I, I want to see the series. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, like, a, like a prequel to King of the Hill. Yes. Yeah. Prince of the Hill. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> but, but it is funny. Every time we do get like a glimpse of early Hank and like his bully tendencies, he's like, oh, he's an ass. you're fat, fatty. <laughs> you're fat, fat, fatty. Oh, I love those little flashbacks where he's just like, oh, I remember those days of high school. And then it turns <laughs> he's, he's into the narrative. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, he's just a, he's a bully. But uh, now he learned boxing. Uh, Hank learned how to box at the Y. Yep. And told Bobby to go sign up for it, and it was full. And he winds up signing up for the uh, women's self defense training class. And it's funny because they kind of give him some shit when he first gets in there. They're like, um, "This is for women only." Like, yeah. They, 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 they're bullying him. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, "No, this is for women empowerment." Blah blah blah. And he's like, "But you don't understand." I was at my friend's house, mm -hmm. and, and, a threw man. Me, and a man threw me to the ground and made me eat dirt. And she's like, "Go on." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's talking. He's, he gets comfortable with it to be at the beginning because he sits down. And there's, that, there's that guy sitting there, uh -huh. and it's the dummy guy. The guy who puts the giant dummy head on. Yeah, because he looks around the room, sees all the girls, and he's just kind of like, uh, sees the one dude. He's like, "Okay, I'll go sit next to him." Then he gets up, gets his nuts fucking racked within five seconds. Yeah. He's like, "Uh oh." <laughs> <laughs> I've seen like uh, like so like videos of that shit going terribly wrong. Yes. Uh, somebody wearing that suit and uh, like a woman striking him in the face because it has a giant eye holes and stuff. And what it does is it's kind of it, it's the exact that right there is actually the skeleton form of a mascot uniform. And uh, if you was to like punch a mascot in the face, it's got that styrofoam shit in the back of it, so you can't really hurt them. But you know, it's got the eye hole. It, it, mm -hmm. What it does is it creates shock and it backs your head up, so yeah. it gives you like a whiplash effect. And I watched a video online of a woman. Uh, she was like a, a, bo a boxer mm -hmm. or like a, a tie boxer. That's what she was. Got it. She knew tie box uses her feet. She kicks the dude in the head and his head doesn't go back. And he looks at her and he's like, oh, sh this is a setup. And so he starts fighting this bitch, and he cold cocks her in the back of the face, like the side of the face with the back of his forearm. Oh, wow. And she goes down because basically he's wearing giant styrofoam padding. Yeah. And he's just like fighting the shit out of her. He doesn't know how to fight, but he's just defending himself. Yeah. Now. She Jesus. starts just racking his ribs and starts kicking him in the knees and shit. <laughs> Damn. That's not what Bobby did, though. No, no, no. Bobby learned uh, the girl classic nut kick. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and started performing it. Throughout the entire school, <laughs> yeah. He oh yeah, with the a, bullies and everything, right? He, yeah, he tries to pull it on Clark Peters. That tries does. Yeah, but like he, he says, he's like, "I'm gonna take this foot and put it in your groin." <laughs> kind of like some fucking <laughs> like some red foreman uh, shit. Yeah. And that famous line, "That's my purse." That's my purse. <laughs> That's my purse. I don't. Know I don't you. know you. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes toe to toe with the one and all. Well, he kicks Hank in the fucking nuts because Hank because yeah. Hank is fucking with him because Hank is a. Uh, trying to show him like hey man look you need to learn boxing mm -hmm. not kicking people in and the he's nuts. like these were my ymca gloves and he starts tapping him in the face mm -hmm. like lightly and you know like your dad teaches you how to fight you know he just starts tapping you just a little bit and bobby doesn't just take to that annoy shit. you mm -hmm. yeah bobby's like fuck that nuts yep. <laughs> boom he's like lift yourself open because he got because hank kept telling me he's like lift yourself open you got you yeah and he throws like this mock punches he's like lift yourself open <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, so while Bobby's like, "Fuck you, yeah, fuck you," <laughs> and then he has to go with goes toe to toe with the woman herself, old Peggy Hill. Uh huh. Yeah, the, he kicks her straight in the fucking cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like, I love Con's reaction. He's like, "There's nothing there, Bobby," and Con's like, "She's lying." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you think Peggy's a man? <laughs> Meanwhile, Bill's just around, just kind of going, "Huh?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, fucking... he kicks Bill in the nuts, don't he? Do what? Did he kick Bill in the nuts? I think so. Or he ends up getting hit in the nuts. <laughs> One of them. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like the only people he attacked in that episode were schoolmates and Hank, and yeah, then eventually was. Peggy. Yeah. 
Y'all are fucking up trivia already. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, like, I'm just picturing fucking Bobby kicking Bill in the nuts for some reason. I, well, the thing I remember is... Because uh, I would happen to Bill. In random moments like that was um, uh, Joseph tackling Dale at one point. Or yeah. tackling uh, Bill. Yeah, he's, he's, he's learning how to... Uh, uh, Joseph's uh, doing wrestling. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or so no, I, no, no, football or some shit. I remember that. And then when Dale had the bald eagle or the uh, the hawk. Yeah. And as soon as he <laughs> takes the mask off every single time, just starts attacking, attacking Bill. Bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those are the two I kind of remember from that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely a good one. That's a great season opener. And they did the thing with the uh, animation where they uh, cleaned it up a lot for yeah. the uh, season premiere. We started noticing that. The first couple episodes of every season are super nice and polished looking. Then as the season goes on, it slowly yeah. gets a little bit more just that classic kind of dirtier look. Well, it's kind of like, uh, like, you know, South Park in, in that documentary, Seven Days to Air. Uh-huh. They showed how they do all theirs. Yeah. Stuff. It's pretty badass. And I guess with uh, network television like that. Because a lot with those uh, season premieres had like guest stars and things like oh, that man. too. Oh man, Mike Judge pulls out a lot of guest stars. Yep, there was the one show. in the next one too. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, which would be Soldier of Misfortune. Gary Busey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I bought this knife because they said I could cut. Uh, no, what was it? He bought something. Oh yeah, and he's like, I bought this knife uh, from uh, from. This, this stupid fucking magazine and they said it could crush a man's windpipe yeah Gary it, Busey is. It, 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 they lied <laughs> <laughs> yeah his character is mad dog in this oh god yeah I, I love this one because it to me is a great Dale episode <laughs> because it has all his idiosyncrasies but at the same time it's one of the few times he really pulls it off oh yeah here's a trivia question what kind of cookies does Dale make Pecan Sandies. Macaroons. Macaroons, fuck. <laughs> Damn. In the shape of entry wound and exit wound. <laughs> yeah, my details on this episode are a little hazy. I forget what uh, Mad Dog even looks like. Mad Dog looks like Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Just the tall Gary Busey. They only did that like a handful of times where the uh, animation was clearly the... Uh, yeah, that person. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought Mad Dog was all like G.I. Joe'd out. Well, he is, but he's yeah. a, a Gary Busey looks like that. Yeah. Like if you was to give him a tight shirt and fucking gun, <laughs> he looks like a fucking soldier of fortune. But... uh. But I like this one because, yeah, yeah, motherfucker, what do you mean the memory is blank on this one? I was just like, ooh, this is a good one. You're just like, oh, okay. And then you really start watching it. <laughs> it's a, this whole episode starts. I forget. It whole starts with, you know, because they have the election for the gun gun president. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> And remember the whole thing was he runs unopposed constantly. Yeah. And Mad Dog had just got out There's of prison. So many episodes. <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> Thirteen seasons worth. Yeah. But uh the whole point of the thing was, you know, Dale was running unopposed mm-hmm. and they're like, Hey, tell uh Hey Mad Dog, listen to Dale's story about his bounty hunting thing and it's all bullshit. Yep. It's all bullshit. But those guys eat it up. And uh, Gary Busey's like fine, or no, no. Dale pulls out his gun and twirls it like a dumbass, uh-huh. and it misfires. And he almost Fires shoots. A, he almost shoots Gary Busey. Yeah, yeah. he goes into the <laughs> register, and uh, he decides to run against him. He's got this giant fucking table of baked goods. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I love, uh, I love that, like, uh, you know, this is so Dale centric. Mm-hmm. But then you find out like something about Dale's gun club that you wouldn't think of a like, Texas gun club. He says, I'm going to lose the black vote, uh, like Peter, and the gay vote, Peter. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, they have a black gay guy in their fucking group, which yeah. is not, this does not say Texas no. at all, at, at multiple angles. It's the, it's the one guy in Texas. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the one guy in Arlen. <laughs> but it's cool, though, because it's like it's still that subtle nod to they're all very accepting. It's like yeah. they may seem a little, you know. They don't tackle, like, they tackle racism in one episode, yeah. but they don't tackle like the LGBT people are they do a little bit later on later on yeah, yeah not, not not well they kind of do in the earlier season even with Peggy's turtle song well that, that was about feminism yeah yeah but it, but it was still with a lesbian lead no 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 it was about a t- female turtle and a male turtle I'm talking about the uh, the girl that oh, was yeah, teaching the pro-choice Peggy. Girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pro-choice girl. Yeah, yeah. She, she seems a little pro-choice. Yeah, yeah. No, kind you of, don't think that girl needs a home cooked meal? <laughs> no, they just tackle like fragile masculinity more than anything yeah. with like yeah. characters like Hank and yeah, things but, like that. And they're just understanding. But no, this shit is fucked. 
this is this is actually fucked. This is where they play a trick on Dale mm-hmm. to give him some confidence. And yeah. Hank plays Mr. Big. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. This is the pocket sand. Yeah. Yes. Two episodes in, we're in two major memes. Yes. That's fucking awesome. That's how you open a season, man. right? <laughs> I, just, I just love it that Dale just can't can't do a I simple thing of Mr. taking a dream a, a fucking. Uh, Briefcase. Briefcase, and he steals a teddy bear. <laughs> to daddy. Yeah. Daddy. Yeah. That, was, that was really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, was, that was creepishly good. <laughs> but I like Hank. I like Hank. So he's like, Hank, he's like, you can't be Mr. Big. He's like, I am Mr. Big. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> the comedic timing on some of those jokes are great. I also oh, love it's subtle comedy, man. It's like, oh, yeah. yep. it's up on you. And, and I love how um, <laughs> when, when they're all sitting in Hank's truck uh, trying to tell Dale to go in there and get the briefcase, he's like, go inside and get the briefcase. And Bill's in the back. like, and get a Twix from the vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> he's like trying to wrap up the car. He's like, Twix. <laughs> <laughs> and well Dale fucks that up yeah, of course and they uh, they end up having to go to the gun club mm-hmm. and they forget the way to the gun club and eventually show up at uh, Matt well no they no uh, it's before they get there uh, Dale comes running out sees the guys and is like I gotta get to Mad Dog yeah. and so Dale runs off to Mad Dog's place so the guys have to go follow and him and they, they what the fucked up thing is is they don't realize it Mad Dog booby trap the trail to the gay yeah. club, and like because Gary Busey, I love Bill. He gets trapped by a fucking snare, yeah. And he's like, "I'm too big, I'm too big." <laughs> like he gets the out of it, then doosh. yeah, into a fucking like taunting hole or something. That's some Vietnamese fighting hole, right? yeah. <laughs> then uh, I forget how uh, Boom Boomhauer gets trapped. He gets trapped in the net, I think. With, yeah, with Hank. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Gary shows up. Hmm. And he's like, that Kidnaps was, that was right. like 300 pound test. <laughs> like he's mad because the snare didn't get Bill. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm going to kill these motherfuckers. So he basically tells the gun club, we're going to kill these motherfuckers. And then it's like, oh shit, this is how Waco happened. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, and then eventually Dale rolls in. He seems like he's going to fuck it up and all this other stuff. The gun club's getting freaked out because they're just like, uh, Mad Dog, you're uh Yeah, you're getting a little raw, 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 raw there, but Yeah, he's like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, then uh and Dale figures it out. Mm-hmm. He's like, uh, he he tells him he uses that fake story because he 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 realizes that the guys have been kidnapped by Mad Dog. Yeah, and he uses that fake story of the flower delivery guys. Yep, who are actually the CIA and the FBI. Mm-hmm. And all the people in the gun club are losing their shit when they show up. Yeah, they look like they pull. They, they kind of look like Robert Patrick from fucking or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger from T uh, two. Yeah, where he shows up with the big roses and the shotguns inside. That's and right. The thing is, is they build it up good in the yeah. episode. Like rewatching it now, it's like everyone's in fucking sunglasses. They're like kicking open doors. They're passing out these bouquets. Like they're passing out guns and shit. I mean, they set it up really good in the I like episode. Dale, he puts his hands up. Uh, He's like, I'm sorry, sorry. I, I seem to have forgotten my money, but my friend over here. <laughs> Uh-huh. We'll be happy to pay you. And, and they're back in the cabin. The, yeah, yeah, they're back at the the, the, the guys are back in the cabin. Gary Busey's outside. He's yeah, yeah, but the guys are back in the cabin, going like he's flashing his badge. It's true. <laughs> Dale Dale wasn't lying. And then he takes off, and Gary Busey, uh, he has a grenade. I yeah, forget. that's how he dies. I yeah. forgot. I forgot that he dies. Everybody forgets that in King of the Hill, someone gets exploded. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in the very yeah, because he's just like I ain't dying alone or some shit. And he, no, like, he, he's like I ain't taking me alive. Uh huh. And then I. Uh, he blows up the cabin and they're like, Did we forget someone? Wait a minute, Bill! Yeah, Bill was in there the whole time. He's like, I'm okay! And then the credits roll. Well, no, the credits don't roll. Yeah, they go back to the gun club. Because, again, they they were only at uh, Mad Dog's house. They weren't at the gun club. No, they uh, were at the gun club. Well, they, he, they blew it up, though. Yeah, but they built a new one. I'm pretty sure that was just Mad Dog's house. No, because the, the, there was the trail to the gun club. Yeah. Because that's why the, how the guys got fucked up. They wouldn't know where Gary lived. No, they were going to the gun club because that's where all the guys were hanging out. And then there ha- has to be two locations. There's probably Dale's house. <laughs> no, because they were back at a certain spot and they were like, Dale, Dale, tell the story again. He goes, again, gladly. Yeah. All right. So it was two weeks ago yeah. and I pretended to I accidentally know. shoot I my think, gun into another the room. I think they built was, another one or a VFW or something. It was somewhere out in the woods. Yeah. I don't know. I got a dollar on it. 
<laughs> we'll, 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 we'll watch it after this. Okay, because I'm sitting here going, I'm like, it has to be two locations either way because they, they were back at that same spot at the beginning of the episode at the end of the episode yeah. and a building blew up. Yeah. Yeah, that was, the comp- that was his little compound. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say. So either way, yeah, regardless, I, I love how he, I he, he, he makes that part of the lore, though. He's just like, I accidentally shot my gun into the register <laughs> just to see who I could trust. <laughs> A moment of glory for Dale. Yes. All right. After that is Lupe's Revenge. I don't like this episode. You do or do not? Do, do not. It's a Peggy episode. <laughs> she goes to... She take, the oh, sum, this one. Sum it up in one sentence. She goes to Mexico on a field trip and kidnaps a little Mexican girl. Yeah, this one's yeah. fucking frustrating <laughs> because it's frustrating it is a, to watch. because it because it is a Peggy episode and Peggy just keeps d- doing dumb shit like this. Now I'll say I like the episode, but I understand why you guys don't. The reason it the only probably thing, falls flat is because Peggy doesn't get herself out of trouble. No, because there is no there is no comeuppance for her. She doesn't get punished for knowing her for at anger. all. The only the only guiding light in this whole fucking episode is the fact that Hank gets sexually harassed by a cop. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so like that's the only part of the fucking episode I like. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, but I like the ending part mainly because I think. Well, I say I like it, but they could have done the ending a bit better. We don't have to stay too long on this episode, but yeah, exactly what you said. Hank keeps getting hurt, sexually harassed by this cop the entire it's time. Bates. And uh, <laughs> is it really? It's Kathy Bates. And um. And, and she's just like you know keeps pulling him over and like trying to frisk like him, and him up that. and shit like yeah. that it's, it's, yeah she 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 fucking searches them and hot you know. pants yeah. <laughs> yeah she fucking co- does a was the, the uh, Taylor tuck you know when the Taylor's getting your inseam and, yeah and she basically goes <laughs> <laughs> nut check yeah and then she does nut check yeah. <laughs> And um, very uncomfortable. Yeah, but then the main plot is, uh, is <laughs> basically Peggy wiggles her way in to be in the chaperone to a field trip, gets themselves lost because she can't read the directions. Because she's like, I'm going to teach these kids some Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Get, gets them up to this butcher and then eventually brings home an extra child with her, kind of finds out she's in Mexico, and then basically hides her in the house and tries to find a way yeah. to get her back to her country. Yeah, I like don't Hank, think- Hank just like opens the closet door and there's a little Mexican girl. Yeah. And he just like looks at her and just <laughs> shuts the door again. It's like that shit. That, that middle of the trip, don't they go to like a, a cockfight or some shit like that? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. The ticket yeah, butcher. Yeah. It was a cockfighting ring. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that, what's fucked up is that episode could not be would not be like really good today. No, no. because they kidnapped an immigrant girl and yeah. put her in the closet of their house. <laughs> that is some real shit people do. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like Peggy gets her back to Mexico, and she thinks she's done this great, big, you know, good deed. But the child's automatically like, you know, she's a fucking child kidnapper, you know, and yeah. all this shit. She kept me in a she closet. Tells villi- she tells the whole village that she kidnapped her. Yeah, <laughs> and so she gets arrested, and she, but initially she thinks she's like getting rewarded and all this. And there, and this is the reason I say they could have done the episode better. So the way they work it out. In the, in the end, uh, Hank and Peggy's lawyer are talking. and Put her on the stand. And they're like, yeah, just put her on the stand. Let her, in her own Spanish words, explain what happened. And she doesn't know a lick of Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> so she's getting up there talking about hats and snakes and she papayas is, she and all this other bullshit. Substitutes. It, so, it sounds like Spanish she has schizophrenia. Teacher. Yeah. yeah in Spanish. <laughs> exactly. So... The the reason I say it could have been better is she does all of that. The judge realizes what's happened and goes, okay, you're free to go. She even cries thinking, oh, no, I've been found guilty. And they're like, no, 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 Mrs. Hill, you're you're free to go. And she's like, oh, thank God. I thought he was just going to keep talking about you know his stuff forever, you know, just all this other thing. At no point did anyone ever go to her and go, Peggy. The you're reason terrible. you got in this position in the first place is you're a dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't get her come up until at all. No. Like even Hank, there is one episode where Hank does talk down to her, which we'll talk about in the future. Yeah, but he almost goes at it brutally, and he deserved it. So, you know, because yeah, and it's it, like the few times he does, he does get it's almost at inappropriate times. Yeah, <laughs> if I. <laughs> I'm not telling you to go to hell, but if I thought about it, I could possibly make that a possibility. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> or whatever he says in that uh, tornado episode. Yeah. 
Well, the next one is my, one of my favorites because it's got Jimmy Carter in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. And he does his, I, I, I want to say he does his own voice, which would be funny. It doesn't, it doesn't say guest star, so yeah. maybe not. But uh, it's, it's, it was a funny episode. Oh, but it's uh, basically him versus Cotton. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's a Christmas episode. Christmas King of the Hill episodes are kind of a toss-up, actually. I was going to say usually pretty good. The Halloween episodes are good. The Christmas ones are a little bit of a toss-up. Like, I think the one before this, the Christmas episode before this was, uh, or they're stuck at the airport. Was it? That was a Thanksgiving one. Yeah, yeah it was Thanksgiving. Um, because I was going to say another Christmas one was a Bill centric uh, depression yeah. episode. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> another one toss up. Yeah, another one was the old lady that uh, I don't know if you've seen this one yet, Cap. But the old lady that uh, uh, used to live in Hank's old house and then she came back to die there. Yeah, it's like seven seven. Yeah. So I haven't. Yeah, I'm not there yet. So, so is, there, there's like a bunch of weird Christmas episodes. But this, but this is a good decent. one. This was a really yeah. good one. Yeah, uh, the whole thing was, it was a slight to Cotton. Mm-hmm. That was the whole thing. He because Hank does something that you know kids do when they're in school. He calls the teacher a parent's name, you know, like mom or dad. You know, yeah. kids do that shit when they're little. Yeah. Uh, same thing happened to Hank. Yeah, same thing happened to Hank as an adult. He called Mister Strickland dad. I thought he said I love you. Yeah, he did. Okay, yeah. But like it, that's what that's something Cotton didn't like at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because because uh, Buck in front of everyone promotes him to manager of Strickland Propane. Yeah, yeah, and Hank has a little tender moment because of yeah, it. like the one th- because and that's also a little bit of a show of Hank's character. It's like yeah. that's the one thing he wanted so bad. Yeah. It, like it's so far the only thing we've seen that would have pushed him to that emotion without any sort of like poking and prodding it was just all of a sudden bam yeah he couldn't help it he wanted to say it it was awesome but <laughs> so then all of a sudden everything went fucking crumbling oh, yeah. around him because of it uh, it crumbled because of cotton yeah yeah because god's a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> and i'm trying to remember i believe that the uh the whole thing for habitat humanity was it was a volunteer thing to get strictly out of some trouble yeah and as usual and <laughs> dude that is like you know, it's community service and Habitat for Humanity is a great organization. They really are. Uh, what I think is just hilarious about it is you meet some immigrants in this episode. Yes. Because they're building a house for uh, this what couple. Names? Oh, fuck. Uh, I want to say <laughs> Come on, Ant- Trivia Brain. I want to say Anton and something else. Well, just the last names. Oh, uh, I can't remember their last names. I'll see if it was sitting in here. Nope. Yep. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, just saying. Okay. Chris is gonna snap you like a twig. Okay. Right. It's like, all right, I see all how right. it is. All right, I'll ask you a question here in about five minutes. Oh god! See, see, oh. see, 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 how, see how well you know. Oh, I'm gonna fail miserably, <laughs> probably. You come. I'm gonna be like Stephen Colbert. You come to my house, <laughs> you motherfucker. Oh yeah, the, the Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. Yeah. Oh god, I would hate to have to ask him a question oh, about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> God, I'm yeah. already failing miserably by like episode two okay. on memory. Yeah, <laughs> I know on something you've seen recently. Yeah, <laughs> Again, there are so many I need, episodes. I need a James Franco to like come at me with some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, it's he. The immigrant guy is so thankful. Yes. for someone like Hank and the Habitat Humanity people. And he's telling because he's from like Sarajevo and or Ukraine or somewhere, and a war torn part of Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, And he says, uh, I'm so grateful for you, Hank, because where I'm from, it would soldier bust in my house, take my food and possibly kill me. You, you are a very good man, Hank. You know, you, you, you built my house, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then Jimmy Carter shows up. Yeah. Which I love that. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's a, he's a foil for cotton too. I want to say this is more of like an awareness episode for like the habitat for humanity. Yeah. I think Mike judge just did that. Just been like, Hey, did y'all know Jimmy Carter's building houses? Cause you gotta remember this, this is like the early two thousands. Yeah. Mike judge is like, or, or the network. They're just kind of like the, Oh, yeah. here's a tax write off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is, this is December, 2001. This is like yep. right after nine 11. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, it's so actually kind of a perfect time to do an episode yeah, like this. Yeah, you know, totally. It was the whole centric thing about you know the episode was you know helping your fellow man. Yep. And yeah, that's what Jimmy Carter does. Yep. He's yep. still doing it today. Mm-hmm. Ninety-seven years old. Fuck yeah. 
But yeah, so all of that just basically created a huge rift between uh, Cotton and Hank because Cotton heard him say it to Strickland and all that. And it, and that and just... Cotton was being a fucking tyrant the entire episode. Like, like he normally is. And, and every time Hank would try to like reach out to him, something bad would happen. And eventually he went, you know what, Dad? I hate you. And then uh, Cotton slams the door on him and then uh, starts basically nails himself into the house yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that he was trying to help build. And at that point, Jimmy Carter kind of shows up. Well, yeah, Jimmy Carter, he negotiates. Mm-hmm. That's and that's the thing about people don't realize, like people talk shit about him as president. He didn't have a good presidency, but he was a negotiator. Yeah. And negotiated with Cotton for like, what, it was like two, three Dude. hours or some and shit. And I love the fact that he says, yep. he gives this little like history fact. He's like, look, I've done some hardcore negotiating yeah because he did the camp david accords for israel and egypt Uh uh-huh and trying to get those two motherfuckers to agree on some shit was hard (laughs) and he's like this was harder than the camp david Accords." he's like your daddy's an asshole (laughs) and like i'm just picturing jimmy carter actually calling someone an asshole and he's like he agreed to come out he's like yes if he could shoot up my car with his nail gun (laughs) (laughs) so they come out they eventually hug make up everything he's just like no deal's not over yet i got to shoot me up a car a limousine (laughs) like that so carter's like that was just a you know they get you out he's like no no Uh uh-huh well and hank hank defends it he's like well, did Mr. you say that, Mr. Mr. President? You said <laughs> you gave him your word. He's like, all right, and he starts taking pop shots at the car, and then the glass breaks. He's like, you said that was bulletproof, you piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's get the hell out of this fucking country ass town. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, that's a great episode too. I love, but I love the uh, the ending line from Bobby because uh, he's just like, wow, talk about a Christmas miracle. And Peggy's like, what are you talking about? He's like, come on. Come on. And that Bobby and Peggy's just real like, what? I don't get it. He's like, you know, a carpenter, he helped create peace. It's Christmas time. Initials JC. God damn it, Bobby. That was, the whole thing. That, 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 was, that was the thing about Bobby. He thought he was Jesus. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the- it was funny. All right. Well, after that was Father of the Bribe. In which uh, Con tries to bribe Bobby to break up a Connie. Oh, that was a fun. Uh, I do like, I will say, like, we, we're on season six, but I do love the puns of the episode names. Yeah, they really, they're, especially on this one, it feels like some of the episode ones, you know, they're just kind of descriptive. But so far on this one, we've had um, you know, Soldier of Misfortune, Bobby, Bobby Goes, Goes nuts, nuts, Lupe's Revenge. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, th- these are all like quips and the puns. On, mm-hmm. Especially yeah. this one. This one's, you know, the father of the bride. Yeah, and that's why I made sure to really enunciate bribe. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, father of the bride, you know, just your brain kind of auto. You ever seen auto- that movie? Father yeah. of the bride? It's mm-hmm. a funny movie. Polly Shore's that's in a, it. That's a Steve Martin one, right? Yeah, Steve Martin's the dad. <laughs> but the, doesn't it kind of like a start from uh, Connie sending a note to Bobby saying, uh, I'm so bored I could kill myself and yeah. then the parents read it and go like oh my god they're suicidal yeah suicidal and, and that, teens and to me I thought that even as a kid growing up watching that I thought that was a perfect commentary on the reactions of people over just kids talking yeah. you know because it's just like fuck I still say that shit you know it's like I, I'll still be like you know I'm so fucking bored I want to fucking die you know it doesn't mean I'm suicidal you You're know right. or just like I'm so fucking tired shoot me yeah. you know or shit like that well, you know that's, that's also, this is also episode where they get kind of tired of each other a little bit yeah yeah, yeah because they they make uh hank and peggy sit down with con and, and men mm-hmm. and then it was just like oh cool now they're cool with it they're cool with them being together and now bobby and connie are like uh this is kind of shitty now because it was like a forbidden thing uh-huh but now, now they think connie's all because bobby's just like no 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 say you're all super depressed and you know being around me helps with it and we can hang out more and you know your folks will have to be okay with it because it's keeping you happy yeah and all of a sudden it backfires because now they're like oh bobby hill would you like to go to the movies and yeah, he's yeah. Like, like oh fuck and I'm like, this isn't <laughs> yeah. fun anymore you remember the b plot to this it's dale's little radio Oh, the oh, pirate radio shit, thing! Yes, oh my god, yes! I would love to hear like if if somebody could type talk Mike Judge and to do a Dale Gribble Spotify oh my god. radio show at yes. least twenty minutes, twenty yes. minutes a month would yes. be worth every fucking penny. Oh my god, just yes. Dale Gribble talking about conspiracies. Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, yeah I'm, put it on Patreon. Yeah, I, I, I pay for that shit it's, in an instant. Is Dale Gribble doing some Art Bell shit like yeah. coast oh to coast? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Art Bell, David Icke type shit, and then you have like a special guest like 
Boob Howard, Bill, and Hank. And it can only be those three. Yes. Because those are the only three people he knows. <laughs> and then one episode, like a Thanksgiving. No, Octavio. Yeah, Octavio. Octavio would be the guy, the side guy, the soundboard yeah. guy. <laughs> <laughs> but like, he'd, be, uh, he'd be what? Uh, he'd what, be what, Jamie. What, yeah, he'd be Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be Jamie. And uh, uh, just like have John Redcorn out. Yeah. Every now and just coming from upstairs, you hear him go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks like my good friend John Redcorn's here. Hey, John Redcorn, uh, he'd, be, he'd ask him for like musical stuff. Like, yeah. he's like, "What are you listening to now?" He's like, "I'm listening to Rat." <laughs> <laughs> Round and Round's a great song. Round and Round. He's like, "Listen, I'm a big Meatloaf fan." And well, he's I talking about music. Well, I got to go. Your wife's got another headache. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. How's Joseph? <laughs> and uh, I found it interesting though because uh, it th- wasn't this the episode. Eventually, they do kind of break up in this one, didn't yeah, they? they? Break up. they break yeah, because up. this one they start renting the hotel together. Yeah, yeah, they take off, and this is nah, man, it doesn't work out. Yeah, this is when uh, Bobby and Connie break up for a little while. Yeah, and, and it honestly was. It's like even kind of thinking about it, it's still like a touching little moment because they they come to they come to that realization better than some adults do. They write the. Uh, relationships with the kids very well they yeah. really do and so and and like because even when they kind of reach that stress moment of the two of them at the hotel and both of them were just like this isn't working is it and she was just like no i don't think so and he's just like well we've got a few more hours left in the hotel room you want to hold hands still and she's just like yeah sure yeah and, and it's like they it's like they were being such adults about it. and i'm sitting here going i'm just like I know fucking 20 and 30 year olds that can't fucking navigate this shit better than these goddamn kids do. None of the, none of the adult <laughs> characters are really written like that either. No, no. But it also just goes to show just how, again, what we've said since episode one of doing these King of the Hill episodes, just how pure of a character Bobby is and, and even showing how much Connie is too. Just unfortunately, she has a little bit more negative impact in her life due to her father right yeah. that kind of give the uh the grim reality of every character mm-hmm. too but, but you can see but, her kind of pushing through that in episodes yeah. like right this. Con, still- Connie is the negative hank yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's the perfect foil. Yeah, that's why his name's con yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's an anagram for hank yep <laughs> but yeah so i wouldn't say too much to really talk about on that one like, just- i think this is a part one of a part two because in the next episode, you know, the, the right. Valentine's Day, the, he's still struggling. He's not over it. Yeah. He's not taking it well. That's why he hangs mm-hmm. out with Bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, he, he was cool with it that night. But then, as with every relationship, the next morning sets in and you're just like, fuck, this is the new life, isn't it? <laughs> that yeah. kind of shit. And, and poor Bobby, none of his adult friends are, uh, or none of uh, his dad's friends are any help whatsoever. No. <laughs> so we might as well hop to episode six at this point. I'm with Cupid. Yeah. Uh, it's it's anniversary. I think it's like Hank's anniversary or something. Because they leave. They leave town. Yeah. It, uh, it might not be their anniversary, but they're mm-hmm. doing something. They, they yeah. leave. Yeah, they left. Uh, and Bobby decides to hang out at home and bill comes over for some fucking bill. reason yeah and the whole time they're like don't let bill over or uh bill wants to come over yeah. or something like that right <laughs> hey bobby and the whole time like they asked bill to check in on bobby yeah but, not, but don't, but don't hang bobby. out with him that's what it was and, uh, he's taking out with bobby <laughs> <laughs> And he tells Bobby he blew his shot. Yeah. He'll be alone forever. Uh huh. What the fuck? <laughs> Bill, not everyone is going to turn out like you. Yeah. <laughs> You're just a sad sack of shit, Bill. That's yeah. your problem. <laughs> you will always be alone. <laughs> yeah. And, but but I will find it funny, though, uh, that one scene where the both of them were just like sobbing on the couch and, and, and uh, Bobby has on the tank top and the boxer yeah. shorts and Bill's matching them and everything. And like, oh, oh no Or, uh, uh, Lenore. 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 <laughs> and then Hank gets there. And there, he sees them too, like the sad sex sit there. Uh-huh. Got it. <laughs> uh, no. God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it all kind of cultivates to the um, near the end of the episode. Uh, they're having a Valentine's party. Who was hosting it? Was it Lou Ann? No, 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 no. It was. Uh, I feel like it was at the Hill House, though. It might have been at the Gribbles. The Gribbles, maybe? Because I feel like, because I remember... that's a sex shag right there. <laughs> oh, no. It happened at Connie's. That's yeah. what happened. Connie was having a Valentine's party. Yeah, mm. and Bobby shows up dressed up as Cupid trying to win her back. Yeah, he, he gets full bill. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then eventually it's like smearing chocolate on his chest. He's like, I'll be your honey bun. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm all kind of, I'll be your honeymoon. <laughs> and, is, and is Connie flirting with uh, Joseph at this point? No. Nah. I can't remember. She's a, she's a really maybe Chain. Yeah, because they, no, they used that motherfucker. But I think that may have been a reason why. Yeah. And, like, uh, oh, you even because I feel like I remember Bobby do saying that at some point. You don't even like Chain. Yeah. But uh, he comes back with that Cupid shit. It's hilarious. Uh-huh. That is some like Buffalo Bill type. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my Valentine? I'd be my Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be mine all night. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It puts the propane on the grill. <laughs> yeah, it cooks the propane to the grill. <laughs> yeah. So so poor Bobby. He's he's having Meech. to do some. <laughs> he's having to do some learning and some growing on these two episodes. <laughs> The poor kids on this series are just so innocent. Yeah. Tara Strong shows up. Yep. As another character. Debbie. Debbie. Yeah, what is, oh. It's not Debbie Grunt. She's dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a different Debbie. Yeah, this one, uh, the next one, though, is, pretty, is a solid one, though. Tort Song Hillology. Would, yeah. And uh, that's the one in which... Uh, Winter Olympics. The Winter Olympics. And, uh, and Bobby... Bobby wants so bad to finally get a like a trophy because he he finds out that he well, had. This is a, where you find out Bobby's real name. Mm-hmm. Yep. What's Bobby's real name, Cap? <sighs> Robert. What's the? I, I thought it was. <laughs> it's his Robert. But what's, what's his the middle, middle name? Hmm. Because remember, he's got the he's got a Hank Rutherford Hill as a shelf, and it's all his trophies. Mm-hmm. And then there's another shelf. With like a spider plan on it. And it's some covered shit. in like st- terrible fucking yeah. plants to have in your house. I, I remember the part that you're talking about now. Yeah, but it's Robert what Hill? Robert Bobby Hill. I don't uh, know. It starts with a B. <laughs> it starts with a B. close. Come on, you came out with your shit, Lynn. Robert Benjamin Hill? No. Robert Butch, Butch Hill. Oh. <laughs> Robert Butch Hill. It took me a second. I, I had to remember the middle name, but as soon as Robert popped in my head, I was like, Butch, that's what it is, yep. <laughs> but uh, he writes that essay and everything. And, mm-hmm. uh, it and then the guys. Yeah, well, the guys were like, well, let's, let's, let's try it. Like, let's just, just put in, let's help him out. Yeah. You know? They think they're helping Bobby. Yeah. They're not. <laughs> no. They wanted to, well, no, they, they want Hank to do it. Yeah, they write a letter for Hank. Yeah. And they thought you know that might help them <laughs> no they were trying to get hank in they weren't trying to uh, the uh the guys in the alley were trying to get hank in because they were just like because of his football stuff yeah and the, and but bobby wanted in so hank was trying to help him in because he sees the shelf and bobby's just like i want a trophy and he's just like well you're not really good at anything son <laughs> <laughs> essentially <laughs> you kind of suck at everything well, that's a, but i guess also, you could do this peggy also takes one of hank's trophies out of a box it, yes like, changes, like, fucks with it a little bit and- it, it's it's, it's you putting your Nerf uh, football in the hamper. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hank still hanging on to his like uh, his high school football glory days mm-hmm. and shit like that. Yeah, and that's why the boys wanted them wanted him to do it because he w- he wasn't happy about it. He's just like, what? I, I didn't even submit. And they were like, we did for you. Intro, second paragraph, and then Dale was like, and I wrote the signature. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did, Dale. <laughs> Yeah, so Hank eventually gets it, but I like this one because it fucks up for him royally because he enjoys himself for a second. Yeah, he's back he's in his glory days, mm-hmm. and that's what he tells Bobby. That's what got him. That's what fucked up his leg. Yep, because the entire time he's just like, you know, you always have to be humble. You have to do this that, and the other. I'm only doing this because I've been elected to. You know, just being so you know Hank about it. Yeah, and then all of a sudden. As soon as he starts feeling good about it, he starts walking backward like a jackass. <laughs> and drops it in a puddle. Yep. But what was the uh, uh, the saving grace of that was the fact that Dale Gribble lit his cigarette. Yes. And he's so cheap. He's one of those guys who lights a cigarette with another cigarette. <laughs> yep. So he kept the fucking Olympic flame going. Yep. There was goddamn cigarette. <laughs> yeah. The Olympic is still the original flame. And he's like, puff. Mr. Yes. Gribble Puff. <laughs> Puff, Mr. Gribble Puff. He's like, I can't. It's so fucking. I love, I love the fact that the black guy from the next town over yeah. is so excited. He's like, What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then, then he gets like really crazy about it. Uh, he finally passes off the flame. He's like, Yeah, fucking. Uh, he's like, Black guy running through the streets of McManaberry. With, with an open flame. Nothing. Black nobody can do what he can do with that. Nobody can do that. <laughs> fuck you, McManaberry. <laughs> Goddamn. Look up at McManaberry. Here I come. Black man running the streets of the flame. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> anything you knew about it. I like that. Like, just, it goes back to Hank. You know, he's so proud that the Olympic flame is being kept alive with propane. Yes. Yes. 
<laughs> but but it is really cool though because uh, at the end of it he does give it to Bobby. Yeah. And uh, Bobby puts it up on his shelf and uh, he's just like, "Now, Dad." He's like, "Now." And he starts and he starts like doing the Egyptian and everything else. Oh yeah, because at the beginning of the episode they're showing Hank's highlight reels. Yeah. And it was just like, "Whoa, Dad, look at you!" And he's like doing backflips and doing the Egyptian walk and everything. And he's just like, "I." didn't know people walked like egyptians back then <laughs> <laughs> he is his father's son <laughs> yeah so that was a fun one and um i don't know uh the next one always kind of fell a little bit flat for me i love the next one it's just weird. like a woman it's alan rickman it's the recent renaissance festival yeah this one's weird it is weird it's about sexual harassment yeah but yeah. lord dern's in it too it was just fucking hilarious <laughs> but but the reason i was just kind of like eh, on this one is again i guess just it's so deeply rooted in me that I've not cared about the whole Renaissance goblins and yeah. dragons. Well, this and is also shit. kind of a Peggy centric episode a little bit because yeah. she, goes, she goes to work at the Renaissance Fair. Yeah, and what's funny is and a strong, independent woman like Peggy. Yeah, mixed yeah. with that time and period yeah. does not. Well, the mix. guy tries to keep it too close to that, right? That's yeah, that's, the that's, that's always the trope with any like Renaissance themed. Uh, Hell, even South Park yeah. covered that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> role models, Family Guy. There's always the one guy that takes it too seriously and that's yeah. what uh, Alan Rickman's character was doing yeah Philip yeah I like I, lo- I like how he breaks character at the very end of the episode he's yeah. like what be this document Texas Board of Education or a oh, board oh damn oh is it Board of uh, <laughs> Board of Labor or something Board like of that. Labor and, like he goes from like a Alan Rickman's bad Texas he goes, <laughs> he goes from English Alan Rickman to Texas Southern, uh, <laughs> or at least, oh, damn. or at least his attempt at it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Mike Judge was like, "It doesn't matter." The Alex. Texas Board of Labor. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, you're being sued, you piece of shit." <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it definitely tells a good message. You know, it, it's it's a good, you know, it's a nice little feel good episode. You know, for Peggy and Santa for women's rights, it has a good message. It's just. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> I can I can see it. It's another like played out, uh, well not played out, but uh, annoying Peggy episode. I, this is also one of those episodes where Hank's like, Peggy, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to sell him some propane. Yeah, yeah. Even, I'm trying. I'm trying to make us some motherfucking money. I think that maybe another reason I don't like it is it almost feels like Hank has written a little bit out of character. Yeah, because he, there, there's a lot of times he stands he's up to, for he's her. Talk, he's talking down to Peggy in this episode. Yeah, in the beginning. And there's so and many he would never times. Do that. Yeah, exactly. There are so many times in which he stands up for her regardless. Like even the um, Randy Travis. I was about to say that even the Randy Travis episode, he knew that bitch was crazy, but he was still sticking up for her all, through all of it. And it just felt like this one from the get go, he was automatically just like, shut up <laughs> or I will backhand you. <laughs> well, he tries to defend her and loses. Yeah. Uh, and then she does the whole Black Knight mm-hmm. thing. And it was pretty well, good. Well, I'm talking about like verbally defend her before that, yeah. before doing the whole jousting thing. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll that. A Hank a season or two ago wouldn't have let it get that far. It just feels yeah. like he probably he probably would have had her tell her not to work at the Renaissance Fair to begin with because you know you're already pissed off the guy. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, this probably wouldn't be smart. Just don't do it. <laughs> Although telling her that she would have done anyway. So yeah. They don't yeah, speak Spanish. Themselves in- <laughs> they don't speak Spanish at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> yeah. This was definitely one of the uh, goofier episodes of the season. Yeah, it was a little goofy. It, it, like I said, it's still a fun one. I would still say this is far from one of the bad seasons. Right. It's not like season seven where they kind of lean in on the silly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, although, next one, love this episode. The bluegrass is always greener. I do too. And this, is, uh, this is where we have a second special guest. Yes. That's, that's, well, not just that, who's appeared twice already. Mm-hmm. Fucking uh, Charlie, Charlie Daniels. Daniels. Yeah. Yep. But we also get Yakov Smirnov. And Vince Gill is Boomhauer's singing voice. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. That's when awesome. Howard sings, it's Vince Gill. And uh, really, really basic plot for this one. Like, not a lot happens, but it's a very good character episode. Because all the episode really is, is Connie is playing uh, her Just, uh, is playing along in her room. Uh, the boys uh, decide they want to start up a bluegrass band with her. What's the name of the band? Uh, the Dale Gribble Exper- Experience? Okay. And? It's something like that. With, it's with in Connie? somebody's name. Dale Gribble and the Dale Gribble Experience. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, oh. I couldn't remember if it was just Dale Gribble Experience or, you know, because 
Okay, also, yeah. what did Dale Gribble play? He played the keyboard. Yeah. He but was no, he was the bass, bass player. Key, bass yeah. keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. But yeah, so give it up for Connie. She's old. <laughs> she's years old and it's like an eighty fucking year old Carly Daniels. <laughs> but but plot was very simple on that. She she had a, a recital to go to. She decided she didn't want to do it. She wanted to go play well, bluegrass in like, like, Tennessee. Yeah, they were playing in Branson. Yeah, yeah, uh, they were playing in, like a blue Branson, Festival Missouri. In Branson. Yeah, Branson, Missouri. Uh, and what's fucked up about this is this is where you find out Hank can be just like Con mm-hmm. when it comes to talent. And he's like, I'm, I'm trying to help you follow your dream of playing bluegrass. She's like, that's not my fucking dream. That's just something I want to do. So this is just this fun. one time, you know, like that's not my goddamn dream. Me yep. and Bobby are going to go on on the road with his stand up and my violin. That's that's our dream. Yeah, because by this point they're back together. <laughs> yeah, that's the dream. Damn it. Yeah. I, like, I do like how the fact that they're playing and she's playing the fiddle, Hank's playing the guitar, Boomhauer's singing, keyboard. Uh, <laughs> Bass and, keyboard. And Bill's got the washboard. And uh, what does Bobby, Bobby do? He picks up a jug, jug. and starts yep. blowing it. You know, the, you know, the hillbilly flute. And, uh, <laughs> Hank's and just like, Bobby. <laughs> put that down. I put I put nails in it. I put, I put, like, I, yeah, Bobby that's where I keep get, things. <laughs> Bobby gets kicked out immediately. Yep. yep. <laughs> You're not in this fucking band. And Stick to comedy. Time, and the whole time when they're going to Branson in the van, uh, Bobby's like, I wrote this. Dude, Yakov Smirnoff's going to be in Branson that day. Yes. I'm going to write him a joke. I wrote a joke that's that right. he would play. And Hank doesn't believe him. Uh-huh. Because Yakov Smirnoff's like, oh, that's hilarious. He's like, and then he leans down, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's he like, does, I don't really do those sort of did, jokes Hank anymore. Hank does something that's kind of shitty that happens a lot for like, he pulls like an Andy Griffith. He pulls a shitty moment with this kid. He's like, He's like, look, Dad, Yakov Smirnoff gave me twenty dollars for his for a joke. He's like, ha ha, Bobby, you shouldn't take things from my wallet and puts it in his wallet. I'm like, you yeah. piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, Bobby does get it back at the end though, because, because uh, Dale poisoned the mother or sprayed the motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> sprayed him with pepper spray. <laughs> But yeah, so I, 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 th- I thought that, uh, this is one of my favorite ones though. But yeah, I, of this season for sure. I thought I like it was, the ending makes this because because it, of Con. Yeah, well, Con and Connie, uh, Connie, you know, they decide to run away together. Bobby and Connie decide to run away together. Yep. And, uh, they're on the street corner busing, uh, mm-hmm. busing, and uh, she's playing the violin, and he's playing the the jug. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he has like a coke bottle or some yeah, shit. Yeah, and you know, this is a, you know, think about it. There's a music convention going on. It's like South by Southwest. You yeah. go to Austin, and like you're walking from like bar to bar. Mm-hmm. You know convention to convention. There's there's musicians outside playing on the street. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's and they're right that at home be, doing it. That'd be fucking awesome, you know. Just just bust it on the side of the street because everybody's just like, "I want to hear him play." Mm-hmm. And then you find out that Con, Con and Bobby, or Con and Hank, roll up, and that's when you realize uh, Con's a big bluegrass. Fanatic. Well, well, they realize that before they even roll up on the kids. Like they're just kind of talking about, you know, he's like, "Oh, I guess we're just not too different after all." You know, they're kind of kind of singing "Blue Moon Over Kentucky." Yeah, start singing it. He's just like, "You know Blue that song?" He's just like. <laughs> Keep on shining. <laughs> and it's like, are you singing bluegrass? And that's when you realize Khan is actually a fucking redneck. Yeah. That's the first surf sign. And uh-huh. then, then later on when he meets Tom Petty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I love that one. But like I said, when uh, Bobby gets it back is uh, when Hank uh, strolls up on seeing the two of them. He takes that 20 back out and pops it back in, his, uh, in jug. the jug. Yeah. So it's like Bob- Bobby still got it back. But at the same time, I was just like, yeah, you're right. Fuck you, Hank. That was dick move <laughs> yeah. but yeah so at the end of that though so because the kids ran off and hank had to go find them and uh con caught wind of it so he drove out there to go find them now <laughs> dale boomhauer and bill are stuck at the convention and they're just like we don't have a fiddle player yeah <laughs> so they call up fucking <laughs> charlie daniels charlie daniels he's like we did we need someone to fill in she's very sick uh-huh. <laughs> yes. and he's like <laughs> I'll play my fiddle for that girl. I'll play my <laughs> little heart like, out for that girl. <laughs> yeah. And they play and they do like fantastic yeah. performance and everything. Dale ruins it by saying, and hey, give it up for Connie Super Newsome phone. She's only a 13 years old. <laughs> and he's just looking at him like, you I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing Charlie Daniels, probably it, fucking good. Probably would. <laughs> Even uh, at that age. R.I.P. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. He died. He died this year. Damn. Damn, 2020, you mean bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But God in light about 2020, Alex Trebek died. <laughs> I know today, man. Today. <laughs> of all days. <laughs> all right. Well, another 
I think another pretty solid one, and actually a good Peggy episode, in my opinion. She's the still subs- a bitch in this episode. <laughs> she she rob- is. She robs Hank. <laughs> she fucking steals money out of their account. The she does. She does. But it's for once she realizes her mistake and she corrects it herself by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. This is Jeff Goldblum too. <laughs> yes. The Spanish say, substitute yes. prisoner. Yeah, this is the one where um, Peggy gets swindled in because she takes a fake IQ test and then eventually like loses a bunch of money because all it is is a fucking scam. This is also how she gets uh, intellectually tied yes. to uh, Jimmy Pritchard. Yep, yep. Oh, Jimmy Pritchard. That happens like multiple times throughout the show. And that's fucking insane. Uh-huh, because they do that later with the art one. Yeah. The propane man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen you like, that one yet, Cap? Yeah, yeah, we watched uh, yeah, yeah. it. Oh, okay, First okay. I watched it. Okay, yeah. okay. You like my art? It's my art. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love any time Jimmy's in an episode. I'll kick your... I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Walks across a racetrack just to kick Jimmy. I know. Yes. Yeah, start seeing more uh, sub-characters. Like, you get to know a little bit more about the the guys in uh, Strickland Propane yeah. this season, I think, too. Yeah. But yeah, I like this one. Uh, again, yeah, Jeff Goldblum yeah. is definitely the highlight of this episode. Is uh, the um, which is kind swindler. of swindler himself? <laughs> yeah, basically. But, for, although I will say, for the longest time, I thought it was Jerry Springer. Yeah, though well, they have they have a similar cadence. They do. Yeah. But, but yeah. now, but now listening to it, I'm just like, oh yeah, this is clearly Goldblum. <laughs> but yeah, welcome to confuse Jeff Goldblum with the former mayor of Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Remember, he said he, did, he, he got, uh, like, I want him to run for president. I do too. Jerry fucking Springer. <laughs> because he knows how to handle conflict. <laughs> <laughs> and he's honest. That's what's fucking insane. He's so Imagine honest. all the rallies. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> and you get health care. You get it for every speech as a final, top, final, uh, final note. You know? well, that's his. Uh, <laughs> State of the Union's final well, like, thoughts. Yeah, you had like the Roosevelt, like, like when in, back in the forties, you had like the fireside chats with the president yeah. on the radio. Then you'd have final thoughts, with final the thoughts president. with the president Jerry Springer every month. <laughs> it's like a State of the Union every month. He's just like, look, guys, we can get, we can bring it together. We're all we're all friends. We're all Americans here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we're all Americans. Here. And he's like, but the whole thing about Jerry Springer is, you know, you, you know, we're all pretty young to remember to know that stuff. But I know for a fact that Jerry Springer got did a commercial. For his mayoral thing of Cincinnati, he says, "Yeah, I bought a hooker with a chick." <laughs> <laughs> He's like Charlie, just, she, that's what yeah. he got busted for, yeah. or that's what he got in trouble for. Quote yeah, unquote. yeah, he got in trouble for being with a hooker, but he was honest about it. He's like, "Yeah, I used a check." <laughs> <laughs> check bounce. I mean, yeah. What if Jeff Goldblum was president though? <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum is a weird dude. Yeah, but very in, uh, weird dude. But in, uh, I see him as vice. Yeah, Springer Goldblum. <laughs> but isn't uh Peggy uh? I forget what the uh, dynamic is with those two. Uh, so what uh, Jeff Goldblum was selling to Peggy? He was selling her uh, a fake PhD. Yeah. Okay. Basically, and, basically boosting her up, gaslighting her, telling her she's meet, super duper smart. And this is when you meet uh, the guy that's always doing the announcements and yeah, stuff. Yeah. The the Dale secondary Dale. Yeah. The Dale. Uh, yeah, it's Dale. It's the voice of Dale, but yeah. he's also the the guy that does like the football announcements and stuff. Yeah, and coming up the ring, he does a and lot of voices. Yeah, the <laughs> dozer, the bell dozer. Yeah, but they scam like a lot of people. They yeah. scam. They even scam like ten up. or fifteen people, man. One of them is a. Uh, Strickland's maid. Mm-hmm. She gets scammed, and it's like, what the fuck? But Peggy slowly figures it out because Hank's just like, what the fuck? And then, yeah. uh, and then she's like, no, 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 you don't do anything. I've got this. Yeah. And she concocts this whole plan and everything. And you think that she's fucked it up again. You lost twice the amount of money. Uh huh. Because she sets up a fake betting ring. She pulls the oceans eleven. Yeah, basically. And but you know the Goldblum character, he catches on to it, and it's just like, thanks for all the extra money. It disappears, but then boom, the safe that was supposedly in his room yeah. is gone. Hank tricks him. Yeah, and like all this other shit. And um, but no, like he, Peggy knew that yeah. Hank was going to try and come in, so she set that part up oh, for it. Peggy tricked everybody. Well, yeah. no, she honestly did. She she yeah, put she, that in there, and knowing that Hank wasn't going to just let this go. And that he was going to try and go get it. Yeah. So she she planned for that part. And he, she even tells him that at the end. And uh, trivia for uh, Chris here, what was her extra plan that she also had set up? Just in case all of that failed. Oh, she was going to like attack him or some shit. Rob Cl- him. Close. <laughs> close. What, what was she going to take? 
She had someone set up specifically as a last ditch effort, and Hank even commented, "He's he's like, oh, that would have been a felony." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forget. I got my. She, she I goes. I, don't, I, don't, I really hate the Peggy episode. <laughs> <laughs> she goes all the way down to a fake valet, yeah. and he was just like, "Oh." You were going to steal his car. Yeah. That's a felony. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't shock me at all, though, Peggy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that character would do that, too. Yeah. But you know what's funny? Like, she wrote a check, I believe. And, like, she wrote a check, and then the guy, Jeff Goldblum, said, no, I'm going to need cash. Mm-hmm. And, like, that right there should have been a sign of a scam. Yeah. What a little bit. <laughs> But yep, uh, after that one, might as well not stick around on the Peggy episodes too long. After that, There's is, like seven Peggy episodes in this season. Yeah, I know, so let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate Son is next. Oh, that's so fucking funny. There's a lot funny. of Cotton episodes in this, yeah. too. But yeah. this, is, this is the war cop. Uh, this is this is going after Vietnam vets. Yeah. yeah. Because Cotton believes they're pussies. <laughs> yeah. It, th- well, this World was War II in- vets versus the Vietnam vets. That yeah. was an interesting dynamic for this episode. Yeah, it, but, it really but, stuck but to but, the but, old timers. But it was true of America at, some, at one point. You know, World War II vets, you know, they were drafted just like the Vietnam vets. However, they were spread out more, mm-hmm. you know, Going being drafted is a sense of duty to their generation. Right. Them getting drafted for a war they didn't believe in is different. Right. From like, you can't say the North Vietnamese mm-hmm. in Ho Chi Minh is equal to the Nazi Empire <laughs> and Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like there's a difference there. Yeah. You know? and, I think uh, with this and, one that they're kind of uh, explaining, you know, gaps in generations yeah. and you know different you know lives, different yeah. uh, generations had. To, Different experiences, yeah, every, different strokes for different folks. Exactly. Yeah. But and the, King of the Hill was actually always very good at doing that, even yeah. from a season or two ago with the uh, paintball uh, episode. Starts yeah. out with the four guys in the alley uh, picking on Pops, the old man, yeah. and then they get their turn with it with the Green Day crew or the the uh, teenagers yeah. uh, beating them up doing the paintball thing. So it's like they've always done a pretty Kane good job. Kane Stradenberg. They've done always always done a pretty good job at you know showing those weird generational. Games Gaps and you know, at least through a good lens. Yeah, but this one was the whole point was, hey, the World War II crowd is dying off. Mm-hmm. The VFW needs money, needs mm-hmm. an influx of money. And Hank's idea was, well, why don't you invite the Vietnam vets? Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> they lost. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, and all had to do with the propane bill. Yeah, but now they he sets them down and it becomes like, you know, their PTSD clicks on. You know, uh, and what's no up, no thanks to Cotton. No thanks to Cotton. He jumps up and he's like, "Yeah, I gutted him." Uh-huh. And, and he pulls out a fucking band and he's like, "Yeah, I gutted that motherfucker." But for them, mm-hmm. they watch their buddies get killed that way. Or yeah, they, they watch someone get killed like that in the street, like you know, up close to them. That fucking scared the shit out of them. For yeah. them, it was a different story, a yeah. different dynamic. But it's, he puts them against each other. And he gets, Hank, you know, he's riding Hank's back yes. into the forest, and he comes on fucking like a cliff, and Hank's like, "Stay behind me, Dad. I'll, I'll, I'll be like human shield at least for a little bit." <laughs> and then Cotton lo- is looking because you remember he has, you know, he's a soldier. He knows yeah. what to look for, and he sees him moving in the trees, and he's just like, "Nope, we've done, we're done." <laughs> <laughs> and that's when they that's that's when he acknowledged him. He's like, Oh shit, these guys were good at what they yep. did. You know, mm-hmm. we had it all wrong. He, he guys, got a little bit of respect these for These guys him. were soldiers in a jungle, not yeah. a sol- not soldiers airdropping into Nazi occupied France. You yeah. Know? Like it's a different, different warfare. Different story. This is not like Japan. This mm-hmm. is a totally different country. Yeah. That he's thinking about. And I like how they came together about that yeah and it's nice that you see that but you never see the vfw guys again after this no you don't no. but no but you do see that genuine moment from cotton where he's just like oh shit from at least from a man-to-man war perspective i respect you now i may not yeah. like you still i may still give you a bunch of shit i may still poke fun at you and call you a pussy but you're a good soldier <laughs> and you get to see topsy yeah I always <laughs> like seeing topsy <laughs> they were a lot like you fellas but one's from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Do the face, Topsy. 
<laughs> <laughs> yep and after that is uh are you there god it's me margaret hill this was a weird one too um, i don't remember this one it's like i remember it but i don't remember it too well she it's, to be a sp- spanish yeah. teacher at a catholic church yeah d- d- peggy gets wrapped into working at a catholic school and becomes a nun it's weird because they're methodists yeah <laughs> it's a total different dynamic that's methodist up <laughs> i was raised methodist yes it's, it's nothing like catholicism <laughs> Good for you. It's actually I don't remember a whole lot from this uh, episode either because nah, again it's a fucking one. Peggy episode. Yeah, there's not really a beat. Like I don't remember a sad story. No, it, basically all that really came down to this one is she was just worried that because she's Methodist that she was doing some sacrilegious and that she was going to go to hell and she eventually showed herself because well, kind of caught too. Yeah, because Hank shows up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's your it, husband. No, no, a nun is married to Jesus. Uh-huh. Okay, you know you got that all wrong, bitch. <laughs> yeah, so she she kind of outed herself, plus got outed at the same time. But you know, it, that's just what Peggy does. Yeah, it, again, like you said, it's kind of a forgettable Peggy episode. Just to be honest, fuck this episode. Moving on. Yeah, might as well. Yep, because the next one I think is a very interesting one. Taking it to the streets. This had two good stories. Yes, this one had two great stories. Uh, the first one is Operation Infinite Walrus. Mm-hmm. They gave what was the name of uh, the drug they gave was it Bill? Infin- Infinite Walrus. That was all. That was the, the Dale finds out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Placebo. Pl- yeah, and Hank's like, "You mean placebo?" <laughs> I will say, "What's oh here we go, you guys? What is the song?" Bill is singing Freebird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't come to my house. <laughs> well, that's, you guys are more musically inclined than I am. That's why I say this. That's a question for y'all. <laughs> now, our question is, what kind of tank was it? Fuck you. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> M1A1 Abrams. Okay, there you go. Right. Of course. And Chris is like, don't come to my fucking house. Do you want to play strip the gun down and put it back together? I want to play that game. <laughs> no, I want to play play the guitar solo. Yeah. So, yeah, y'all can play that during civil unrest over here. I'm just over here putting my AR-15 back together and wiping the blood off the bayonet. <laughs> and we're playing, can we all just get no. along? <laughs> yeah, try and sing your way out of this one, pretty boy. <laughs> Where's can this you long sing, hair going to get sing, you now? Can you sing distracting noises to get a group over here? Like a down? You know a Lady Gaga song. Yeah. Play it. I play said, Bad Romance while I this poor fuck. I said play Wonderwall. Yeah. <laughs> play Poker Face while I'm sewing up this gunshot wound. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Carry my... Oh, but... Uh, but uh, all kidding aside, please don't, yes. please don't start a riot over an election. No. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> I'm a guitar player. I'll lose. <laughs> yeah. I will be okay. <laughs> I will cook and kill. <laughs> I will cook and kill. <laughs> I will kill and cook. Cook and kill. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, anyway, back to the actual episode Sad here. sack. Bill steals a tank. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, but, but it was interesting, though, what, what kind of led up to it because... Um, it started with uh, him having issues with his wrist and yep. fe- and feeling really down and out about working at the army base. Oh, he, he he's saying he's getting a, he has an injury based on his barber barber skills or whatever, and he's like, oh no, you got you know they're denying his claim, kind yeah. Of. And uh, which is weird for the army, they usually have pretty good health care. <laughs> but, but it's like, even at the beginning, Hank's just like, you know, don't worry, you're an important cog, you know, In to the machine, the machine yeah. and shit like that. And then it's like, when they finally tell him, they're like, yeah, you got carpal tunnel syndrome, you're going to have to be out of work for two weeks. Um, yeah, could, we're, go- we're also going to need this bed for like real injuries. I mean, real, real soldiers. I mean, yeah. You, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so it's just like, he is just getting punched left and right by these yeah. motherfuckers. Oh, this, is a, this, this is also a good little backstory to Bill. Like when he joined the army, he, mm-hmm. he joined the army while he was still in high school. That's yeah. how he got red shirted out of the fucking yeah. football. He joined when he was 17. Yeah. You know, this is after, right when Vietnam was ending. Mm-hmm. And he was a, in the tank corps. You yeah. Know? You know, he... Fort was, Blanda is actually Fort Doing Hood, those Texas. fucking one-arm uh, pull-ups and yeah, shit. Yeah, on a fucking barrel of a fucking tank. Yeah. Built like a brick shit house. Yeah, because he's the bulldozer. Yep. The bulldozer. <laughs> now you gotta say, you gotta do down and up. The, the bulldozer. bulldozer. <laughs> <laughs> there's a cadence to yeah, it. There, there is, and you can only get the cadence kinda, by kinda doing like, it like that. Kind of like when you say Bill's full name. Bill Dotrieve? No. Bill William Dave Fontaine Dave De La Torre Dotrieve. Dotrieve. God. 
William Damn of it. the Fountain of the Upper Bank. <laughs> That's exactly what that stands for. That is Cajun as shit. <laughs> Cajun as hell, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so after he, uh, but after the doctor's just like, yeah, you know what I mean. He winds up seeing in his records and sees like all this blacked out shit in his record. Yeah. And he's just like, what the fuck the is redact- this? The redacted stuff. Yeah. And, and Dale's just like, I'll fucking find out for you. He goes online. And, and, and what, no, he doesn't go online. He does one of the best Daleisms yep. ever. What he does, <laughs> he decides he's going to sneak into the army base to take a look at his records. So he walks up in his exterminating outfit and just walks right through the gate just saying, exterminator. And then ducks into the bushes, unzips like his uniform, Dresses up like a colonel. Walks two bushes down. Yeah, salute, <laughs> salutes a few people, then gets back in his fucking... Well, just takes the jacket off. He's wearing another exterminator uniform underneath that one, and then walks through more doors just going, exterminator. <laughs> I am a master of disguise. So, He's like, you were part of Operation Infinite Walrus. Yeah, so, yeah, grabs it all, takes them all down there, and yeah, Infinite Walrus. And it's an interesting dichotomy at that point because they're like look man you're hairy you're fat you're smelly you're lazy all this shit but it's not your fault it's the government's fault man yeah you were made to fight the russians in the arctic <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly well well actually first bill takes it and he's just all like, about it and, you know and steals a tank and then you know they get them and then they pep them up going look you're not a lazy piece of shit it's not your fault it's the government's fault and for the first time and we only see it rarely but after he did steal the tank and all that happened, they give him the pep up talk. We see in charge Bill again. Yeah. Because what happens is the tank gets pulled over by the cops. And he gets out of there and they're like, uh, sir, why are you driving this tank? You're talking and to a sergeant of the United States Army. Yeah, he gets the You will flex. address me as such. Uh huh. And I will take your number. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he gets a number just, from a cop girl. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like, he's rattling off. He's like, oh, but sir, you're in your underwear. He's like, have you ever been in a tank of, the, you know, he yeah. lists off the tank names. Have like, you ever been in an M1 Abrams in the Texas heat, son? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know the type, kind of temperatures they can get, reach in there? It is hot as can be. And he's just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, are you questioning me? Da, 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 just rattling off just all this shit. And yes. And his arm. Army, you know, cadence too. But uh-huh. yeah, go back to his little pep talk. I just love that. He's like, no, Bill, you took a placebo. It's a, it's a, it's well, a sugar it, pill. Yeah, that was after the fact. Yeah, but he's like, look, you're like this because you are like this. You don't blame the fucking military. Yeah. You're important, though, to in the military, though. Mm-hmm. Now, let's just get this take back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was a pretty good one. I like I like this episode. It's one of the few Bill depressed episodes that's actually good. Yeah. Yeah, especially like. There just aren't a lot of good Bill episodes in general, but this one no. was at least fun. No, they kind of knocked out all the bad ones in the f- first few seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It, it, the, any depressing Bill episode I don't like. I like yeah. a hijinks Bill episode where he's being silly or dumb, but episodes where he's being all super depressed and borderline suicidal, I don't know. Maybe that's just not my kind of humor, yeah. but just I, I've never just found any of those too funny. Bill is just not likable character you know the more you watch him yeah i guess so. so there's no really any redeeming qualities other than when he become he gets into full army mode and it's like oh there you go bill you're standing up for yourself yeah and this one is a pretty fun one because both the a and b plot are pretty good uh of mice and little green men this yeah, one's we just fucking watched. hilarious <laughs> Yeah, we just watched this one. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> when uh, Dale figures out that He's Joseph in- is not his son after all. And that it's actually aliens. Aliens. Yeah. And then Hank's just like, what? <laughs> And the whole time, like he's telling Hank this, Hank's like, "Oh God, he knows. He knows about Nancy John Redcorn. Yeah. <laughs> <Nancy loves you. laughs> I love. It was in Marfa, what's Texas. a better expl? What's a more logical explanation, Hank? The uh, guy blasting well. the guy blasting meatloaf and hitting your wife's box. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's the better explanation. I, I, lo- I love Dale's uh, imagination sequence of like John Redcorn sleeping on the, the couch, couch and Nancy getting le- le- levitated yeah. off the bed and like, like this. Green orb, just like <laughs> bloop. <laughs> some would argue. Some would argue that that's the Jesus origin story. <laughs> I was name, a guy named Mr. Ike. By Mr. Ike. <laughs> yeah. But I like this one because uh, they go to basically like a Roswell type area, Marfa, and uh, yeah, because and, uh, Joseph uh, believes. Uh huh. He Dale. believes all that shit because that's just, Dale's son. Uh huh. Yes. That's Dale's son. Like everybody, you know, talk. It's it's the it's the Guardians of the Galaxy too. He may be your father, but I'm your daddy. <laughs> yep. 
who was uh, what, what did uh, John? Who taught uh, John Radcorn how to do this? Dale. Or who taught uh, John? Or who told Joseph uh, how to ride a bike? John Redcorn. Who told? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that shit. Who taught who him how to walk? John, John Redcorn. Redcorn. <laughs> <laughs> who, taught him how, who taught him how to tie his shoes? John Redcorn. And then he taught me. <laughs> 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 there is that's again. We've said it so many times, but that's one of the things I love about King of the Hill are those quick little jokes like yep. that. Like just that you would usually forget that joke, but just John Redcorn, and then he taught me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the fact that Bobby sticks with Joseph. Yeah. As more of a safety measure than anything. He didn't mm-hmm. want his buddy to go along. Yeah, I like that too. But what I'll say is when they get down to that area, seeing all of like the UFO believers yeah. and like the, all the campgrounds and stuff, it's like I, Dale's that, ilk. You really don't see that kind of stuff anymore. That was really of the time. You really don't see those kind of like hardcore UFO oh, believers. They Whatever. Like that. They're coming out of the woodwork now with they're, everything they, uh, they still, being they, released these days. It's. They're not it's going not, on location. It's not, it's not seen like we see it. Yeah. Because, you know, they're not big on social media, so we're not going to see them as much. Yeah. But there is what? Um, Marfo? There's UFO. 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 Uh, the, yeah, ufologists and shit yeah, like, it's like that. Or, it's an, they've consolidated into an organization that Got reports... It lights in the sky i, I miss the yeah. more rogue tactics yeah, of like the weird motherfucker selling the well, like he said the, and the alien like pee and shit like that, yeah. that i miss those days yeah like <laughs> this it's all it's all consolidated down to green text on a black screen of yeah, the internet. You know, yeah. <laughs> terrible mm-hmm. fucking makeup of a desktop yeah, laptop. It's, <laughs> it's, whatever there's still plenty of communities out there and but like, hey, we, uh, we actually had an acknowledgement of UFOs existing. I know, and no one fucking blew did their anything. brains out and prepared, no. prepared for the death. <laughs> yeah, no, it's like everyone's kind of chill about it. It's because very we casual. have other shit to worry about. Yeah, yeah. 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 Middle, like a m- pandemic in the middle of a pandemic <laughs> an election, and a cartoon election year. and a cartoon president. UFOs yeah. aren't that strange. And taking bets on who's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and, and who? That's and, only for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Not mentioning any names. I got the red of I'm just saying. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought this was a pretty fun one. <laughs> Do what? 2021. Oh <laughs> you got this, Chris. I got Biden. No, <laughs> damn. <laughs> You're trying to fuck up 2021, aren't you? No, nah, man. He'd be president for like a week. No. <laughs> Someone are someone argues somebody that uh, a lot of America already has. Yeah, <laughs> Lord, let's not go into all this. It's still it's still fresh in this uh, the time of this recording. It is yeah, still. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Any more to really say on that episode? Not no, really. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Moving on to the next one. One we also just finished watching. Uh, Man without a country club. Racism against whites. Yeah. Yeah. Which or, uh, affirmative action for whites. Yeah. At an Asian country club. <laughs> for the PGA. For the PGA. Or yeah. as Hank called it, the propane uh, the propane grill association. Yeah, the propane <laughs> gas association. A propane yeah. gas association. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's, it's funny. I do it like is. I do like uh, the rainy street. Uh, country club. Yes, <laughs> that they built their own little. <laughs> uh, no, this, in this is in all, Arlen. Yeah, this is all about uh, this appropriation. You know. Yeah. Con wants to get into the country club. Yeah, and, and it's actually this is actually a, 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 a mean little tug at Augusta National. Mm-hmm. Uh, the it's a golf club, golf course club in uh, Georgia. Yeah. They, the PGA had told them a while back. Uh, something about female members because mm-hmm. it, was, it was a big push to have females play in the PGA tournament of the, the Masters. Yeah. And the, Augusta wouldn't allow that, which like a co-ed. Yeah. Know, golf well, yeah, because like, originally golf was like a strictly male sport. White male sport too oh, for okay. a long time. Got it. Pre-Tiger Woods. Uh, Pre-Tiger Woods. Hell, uh, you, y'all remember uh, that movie about James Brown? Yeah. All right. Remember they shows that uh, scene where uh, he's one arm boxing a kid, as a kid. They blindfold they, they blindfold two black kids, tie one arm behind their back, and put them in a ring together. Oh wow! And they're standing in front of this big ass white house on a stage and fighting, and all these white plantation owner looking motherfuckers are cheering on. Just because that was in Augusta National. Just because Augusta, <laughs> Augusta was just rough as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. James Brown grew up in a fucking whorehouse in Augusta. Yeah, like that's, that's, <laughs> Damn. that's Augusta. So not Augusta, Maine. <laughs> but uh, it, this whole thing was, hey, we need to get a white guy to join our country club. Yeah, 
Which I think is hilarious. Yeah. You couldn't have found someone else. You mean you only like me for the color of my skin? Not for my stroke or for my... <laughs> my Not sense Peggy of humor? likes you for your stroke. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And he comes up to uh, Peggy saying, Wow, Peggy, you look super hot tonight. Yeah. <laughs> wow, super hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's just fucking hilarious. What was that character's name? Uh, Masana Song. Just changed that. Yeah. Yeah, I, f- I forget his name Chang. too. I think his name is Chang. Chang, what's on the song? Chang and Cindy, what's on the song? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of. Was there really a B plot to that? Uh, to that episode? Other than that, there was the uh, uh, the guys. They were still playing golf by themselves. Oh yeah, because yeah. it all starts off with them playing golf in the fucking uh, yeah, alleyway. Yeah, and, and I like the scene of uh, Bill just stuck in the trash can, just hitting it over and over, and Dale's just like, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Cause nine, nine. <laughs> cause Con's trying to get in this country club really bad, and, and the what's his nuts uh, douchebag isn't letting him in. Yeah, and he's just like, "Oh, uh, Con, one more thing, bye." Yeah, <laughs> but I, I love, I love that shit. but I do like it ends. You know, it ends well. Like it does of, with, "Hey, Con, do you want to join our mm-hmm. country club?" And he joins in. And he's just like, "And I immediately vote that we not built out of the club." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Watch it, Dotrieve. You're already on thin ice. Yeah. All right. Next one after that was Beer and Loathing. Ugh. Another Peggy episode. Yeah, yeah, this is fucking loaded with shitty Peggy episodes. I mean, this episode's good, but Peggy is just full on shit heel in this. Uh, Alamo Beer disappears. Yep. She works for Alamo Beer. Turns out Alamo Beer is poison with soap. Yeah. <laughs> Guest star Megan Mullally, <laughs> Nick Offerman's wife, <laughs> but, and she doesn't want to tell Hank. Yeah, she signed the NDA, mm-hmm. and this is how stupid NDAs are. <laughs> yeah, but I will say, me and him were watch- when we were here watching it. She comes home after Hank figures it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's dark in the kitchen. Yeah, he's, he's like, "Hello, Piggy." <gasps> yeah, it's barely and he's lit sitting in the dark the whole time and they're pulling that from like some really fucked up movies right. where there's the guy just waiting in the kitchen for yeah. his wife to come home and he's like here honey have a beer uh-huh. and, and the like, beer's slides tainted co- yeah and she drinks it and he's just like uh huh alright and then <laughs> yeah Peggy's just like and then she's still like denying it after that she she's says like, I, got I, the, I, got I got the a, stomach flu yeah, like, you gave stomach. it to me yeah, you gave it to me uh, I keep telling yourself those that, damn bitch. Mexican bananas yeah Yes, yeah, Mexican bananas. Yeah, because the the beer company is not taking responsibility for tainted beer and at all, and they're uh, putting it in Mexico. And Peggy lets it slip that all the Alamo beer is in Mexico, and then <laughs> Boomhauer guilts Hank into telling him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that he does that too, because it's like he's Dale, like, Dale, yeah. man, I remember growing up playing football, got better than skint knees, tree houses, <laughs> lemonade thing in the middle. Yeah, and right like, in my Hank, yearbook, it was a good summer, and, and yeah. you. you and good, then, then like when you friend, it man. leaves it, it cuts away to something else and then it comes back Hank is still getting guilted by Boomhauer and he's, now he's on his tailgate <laughs> he's like, just like crying like a bitch <laughs> he's like god dang, dang, dang it Boomhauer you're right dang on um, summer nights and then Bears man and then good summers <laughs> okay you guilt me into it stop Boomhauer <laughs> we can go man <laughs> or he says no he confesses first yeah and then and it's immediately let's go to Mexico uh-huh. <laughs> But yeah, so that was a good one, and, and I like how near the end, Peggy, even though she was being a little bit of a shit heel, she eventually fesses up, fixes it, and then kind of has a nice little moment with Hank where, again, something you don't see her do often, she apologizes. It's like the one that, if not the only time she apologizes. Yeah, yeah it's very rare. Mm-hmm. Very rare for her, but it was it was welcomed. It was actually kind of yeah. nice. So she was just like, you know, Hank, I'm I'm sorry. But she's still like, kind of Whoa. a bitch about, bitch about everything, too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Peggy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mean old Dang bitch. old Peggy. <laughs> I wish she had died in that parachute next time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Turn the king of the hill until the end of your show. <laughs> no mothers. No mothers. <laughs> there were no women in Mayberry, were there? There were. But they, I don't remember them. <laughs> either Andy was fucking them or they were dead. <laughs> oh, man, Don Knotts. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don Knotts had a girl. I forget. No, there was Thelma. And, uh, man, and, last and, time I watched Andy Griffith, I was Thelma, like. He, he hung out with Thelma for the whole like whole show. And then Andy blew through like four or five women during the series. <laughs> like that's, that's, what, that's the fucked up thing. There was Helen. There was the pharmacist girl who was a little kind of young. She was about 18. Well, you know, it's Mayberry in the 50s, and whenever this law. was. It was only. It's, it's not illegal if I. 
<laughs> you know your mama's buried under that pond. <laughs> That's where I put her. <laughs> she tried to rat me out to the State Bureau of Police. <laughs> I can't whistle. I can't whistle, so I can do I it. I can't like do that. it right now either. I just like start. I was yeah, I was trying not to get do it too loud into it. Whistle yeah. again, motherfucker. <laughs> Shit. Can you can you stream Andy Griffith? Yeah, it's on it's on Netflix. All right. There's I can tell you exactly which two episodes have black people in it. <laughs> of course you can. Yes, the, the first episode and the episode where uh, the black guy's his coach. <laughs> good, All right. Good to know. <laughs> we'll do a whole after this. After we finish getting the hill, we can do Andy Griffith because it's only like five seasons. <laughs> <laughs> after that, we got fun with Jane and Jane. The cult of the House of Omega. Yeah. We're, we're a celebrity. Uh, <laughs> the, the, we're the two lame brain women of the series another, get wrapped into a cult. Another dumb Peggy episode. Well, it's, it's when you find out that like Luann's lonely. Yeah, Luann doesn't have a lot but of she's friends. She's also ditzy. Well, that's fine. I know a bunch of idiots that hang out together. <laughs> no, she's, <laughs> she, she's record podcasts. She, yeah. no, she, she's not ditzy. She's too independent for her own damn good, <laughs> which makes it. But it makes it difficult for people to love her. Also, she challenges Peggy with her intellectual. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> that's why Peggy, has, that's why Peggy ha- hangs out with Luann, according to I Luann. I want to know what kind of game she created with a twister mat, some Monopoly pieces, and dice. I know, right? <laughs> and a spinner from life. I want to see that fucking game. <laughs> But no, it's just it's the, you know, the B story. The B story is Hank has to kill a bunch of emus for yes. Strickland because it's a pyramid scheme he was involved in. Yep, because they don't have the heart to kill these beautiful fucking birds. <laughs> Dale's uh, Bill in particular. Yeah, well, I was gonna say Dale's uh, dichotomy in that is so yes. great. He's just like I can't do it. Move, I can do it. Oh wait, no, yeah. I can't. Yes, yes I, I can. can. No, I can't. They're just too majestic. Wait a minute, was yeah. he laughing at me? No, he's still just being majestic. Or I, was he? I, never, <laughs> I found the strength have y'all ever like seen an emu really close yes 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 those things are awesome yeah yeah they really I just are got, when i was a kid my buddy of mine he had a field next to his house and you mm-hmm. can walk up straight to the fence and he had the guy had emus and llamas yeah and to keep them calm and stuff he had a giant peacock out there oh nice and those things are terrifying <laughs> yeah because they could like do like a little hop fly uh-huh yeah exactly what and is it, it with, what what is it with um like rural tennessee texas north carolina and their fucking emus Ostriches, peacocks, well, llamas. Well, the same with Strickland. It's a fucking pyramid scheme to get you to fucking buy emus. But yeah, I would see them all the time. Like, like an a, ostrich. Ostriches are weird. Yeah. Have you ever had an ostrich egg? It's like eight eggs. Yeah. It's like, it's big. It's, it's, big it. it's big. It's big. Like, it's about almost eight pounds. But if you used to crack it open, it's about eight eggs. But I understand what <laughs> the pyramids, because even with the llamas and shit like that, because I saw a lot of llamas outside the emus too. Yeah. And alpacas. Llamas, alpacas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, in China, they use those things as like a like a mood builder. Yeah, and fucking offices. Yeah. So, hmm. like, let's say you, you at, at your old place of work. Yeah. Morale uh, booster. Yeah. It'd be just an alpaca walking around, or it'd be a, it'd be a, a alpaca llama mix. That'd be weird. Just be like, <laughs> <laughs> hey girl, let me tell you something. Girl. Just kind of like <laughs> being up all up in your grill while you're trying to type something. Yeah, that's exactly what. It, that's, yeah, but it makes you happy because they're furry, like a dog. <laughs> I'd be like, get but the yeah, fuck it's, away. It's it's kind of a weird episode. I'd shoot though. the fuck out of an emu. <laughs> I, got, I, I just picture a cassowary and be like, yeah. "It's coming for me." <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird episode though because they they don't kill the emu as they just let them go and you know kind of I ride around with them for a while. That tickles me. <laughs> yeah, and, and eventually the the wrap up though is uh, eventually Dale with all the bullshit he spouts actually tells Hank he's like oh wait no they're part of that oh no that's a cult yeah they tried to pay me in jams and jellies yeah <laughs> and he's just like oh shit and he winds up saving everyone by cooking burgers and cooking yeah. steaks <laughs> I really like Hank the power like, of propane I like I like Hank no, the power of meat yeah I like Hank though he's like I can't justify a $400 purchase of meat it's not even a three day weekend, weekend. <laughs> it's like holy shit I know. he's cooking for the block brother but yeah he, he is he balling. probably does too as like, close to that community he is he, him and Boomhauer and Dale and Bill and Khan. Mm-hmm. They probably all in Luann and her house. You know, I bet I bet that's a whole block party. Oh yeah, I bet Hank takes care of all the meats. Bet Dale goes into his bunker and you know grabs some stuff out of there. Mellow yellow. <laughs> then you have the question from like the last episode. So what if they want a media or well done steak? You we firmly, them. but. Per, per, we politely, asked them politely, politely but at, firmly to, to leave. leave. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking great. Yes. All right, and uh, that was a good one. Uh, after that was my own private, uh, my own private rodeo. Dale's gay daddy. Yes, <laughs> and, and this, this was a pretty good one because that's it, another episode where like the world is just over Dale's head. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. Because he thinks uh, he was trying to fuck uh, his wife. He thinks. Yes. He, of all the people that he sees trying to fuck his wife. <laughs> it wasn't being his gay daddy. And like Hank, I like how Hank doesn't realize it's a gay rodeo until after Bill and Boomhauer. Yeah. And, oh my God. And they're like giggling like. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's just like, you better shut the fuck up. Because <laughs> you're around buff gay guys who probably fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. And, and Hank's just there, so like, stop it. Don't quit laughing. They're like, oh, but Hank, we're, we're happy. That means we're gay. What's uh, Dale's daddy's name? Uh, Bug. Yep, Dale's yep. dead bug. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh see, it's a sign. <laughs> oh, I will say, going back to the alien episode, when you find out, you do find out what kind of tr- uh, van Dale's van used to be. What? It's a fucking uh, flowers catering van. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're it's right. pink, and he's wrote, he like, stri- like just spray painted Dale's dead bug yeah. on the side. Yes. <laughs> But this was a good one. Um, I would say the only uh, only thing that wound up getting a little annoying is uh, Peggy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but uh, Peggy. But uh, Bugs' um, uh, boyfriend. I was gonna say that was seems yeah. pretty good though, where the boyfriend comes up and uh, still is this when, by the time when he's Dale doesn't cat. have a clue. He's yeah. A guy. yeah, But does Dale have a clue by then when he sees the? Boy- no, it's Hank that's in the trailer with yeah. the, the yeah, two of them. Yeah, he doesn't realize until the guy goes <laughs> right. And it's like, and it he's was like, oh, funny. Honey, is it? You don't know, do you? <laughs> the, the voice, the, uh-huh. the tight pants, you're not getting it. And then the boyfriend says, like, you got another man in here, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, if he had had just that single scene, it would have been good. But like, th- they just made him too over the top in too many scenes. And oh, it was just like, boy. yeah. yeah. And, and it's just, it, they almost just pushed it a little too far in a few spots. And I was just like, meh. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a little bit more subtle now. Yeah, probably. But I still, I thought still it was a great one, and just kind of that realization of like seeing Bug and his lover kiss in front of Dale, and it just how he was just like, oh, <laughs> or like, uh, oh, because he thought he was a CIA agent, not right, gay. Right, exactly. Everybody's like, I can't talk to my dad. It's like I'll never forgive you. You're a CIA agent. <laughs> it's about like the Joseph yeah. Alien reveal, quote unquote. Yeah. And the one after that was Suge Knight. Oh, this is where uh, Hank has a uh, fantasy about Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's actually kind of interesting the way they wrap that one it's up. A, we won't get val- ahead of it. It's a, but. Val- it's a Valentine's Day episode, actually. Cause, or no, it's her anniversary. It's yeah. and Nancy's anniversary. And she surprises her with a hot tub made powered by propane. Mm-hmm. And Hank's like, oh, man, I've never put a hot tub together powered by propane. The, the fittings don't match. And he's getting kind of sweaty. Uh-huh. He's, he's just getting like, all confused oh, about it. like... And that's really, it's really, it's really, and then he's like, he's, he's, he's like, it's oh, innuendo, there's yeah, innuendo the in the visual but he's innuendos got his two are hands like crazy. And he's kneeling and he's just like stroking a fucking wrench trying to get this goddamn pipe fitting back yeah. on. And he's like, almost got it. And you can hear the gas go through. He's like, oh. uh, and the bubbles start flowing in the uh, yeah. hot tub and everything. Yeah. And he's just like, sure, oh, sure. fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hank Hill's Craig Fresh. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, he's in the for sex and he's, and he's getting kind of really excited. You know, he gets home. He tells Peggy, he's like, man. Well, right after that, though, uh, Nancy Delco. basically strips down to nothing but her uh, bikini. Hey, but he, he doesn't see that. He like looks past it. Yeah, but she still but, does it around yeah, him, kind yeah. of setting up the Yeah, episode. Nancy's still part of it. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't distract him, which is fucking Not hilarious. Not at all. But, but like, Nancy's awesome. All, you know, this, this Nancy is like bi- he's single-minded. Kind of yeah, thing. Nancy in a bikini is only there by proxy. <laughs> yeah, and then because of that, he had fantasies he, he, well, and he, dreams. He, he had the fantasy dream, but before that, he gets like really excited to tell mm-hmm. Peggy what he did that day. He yeah. hooked up a hot tub and turned it into a gas propane powered hot tub. And she's like, "Wow, it sounds like you really got worked up." And then they fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and then while he's laying there after they fuck, so asleep, he has a sex dream about Nancy. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> and, and that is it's not, ter- even, it's not even a sex dream. It's just her naked. Yeah, and he's cooking. <laughs> and it. Fuck Peggy up just to the point where she doesn't know what to fucking do with herself. And well, he's, he's more upset about it, I think than he than she is because he was he's at get, first, but he's, then he eventually like, Peggy just like went nuts. He with it. kept having dreams about it. Yeah, the, the problem with Hank was he felt guilty just mm-hmm. for having a dream, and then Dale I, <laughs> Dale offers Hank to come over for a hot tub party, and and. Did Peggy makes a weird ass statement? Nancy, get out of the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, but no, it, what does Peggy say? Peggy says a really weird statement. She's like, "What? You want to swing with Dale and Nancy? Yeah, who gets the best in that deal? Dale, obviously. Because <laughs> she's like, she he gets to fuck me. <laughs> she thinks she's better looking than Nancy. <laughs> so, so, that's how she sees her shit. So, yeah, she's a narcissist windbag. Yeah, who speaks yeah. bad Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> Mucho bad Spanish. Yeah. Espanol. 
But yeah, it th- this one, this, <laughs> and, and, and Peggy's just like we're, we'll go to a nudist colony and we'll grill together. Yeah, they go to the nude beach at the yeah, park. Yeah, yeah, and and eventually it just kind of comes to find out that it wasn't the whole sex thing. It was just it was the grill. Yeah, it was something brand new yeah, because because he started talking about. It. He's like, yeah, those dirty hippie girls want to transform their uh, yacht into fully propane thing. This that and the other. Oh, it just gave me a rush. Oh yeah, there's so many things well, propane remember, can do. Yada yada yada. She she thinks it. Her whole marriage is hinged on this. Well, no, like even in the beginning of the episode, before he goes to work on the hot tub, he's having a bad day. He's, yeah, he he gets to that point like we all do, like at work, at a job, or at where we get complacent, and there's just something we don't like about yep. it. The monotony of this mm-hmm. one job, and yep. he got too complacent, and then he did this he had to one spice thing, it up, and he spiced it up by giving giving Nancy the pipe. Yep, <laughs> and, and then his wife, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and now we're down to our last few episodes. Uh, the second to the last, because the last is really a two-parter, but it's really just one episode. Um, but let's I say, let's save that for the next one. Save it for the next one. Yeah, I think we should save that because that's a big episode. Okay, I was gonna say we still just tack it, it on at the end of this. Does it tie into season two or the next season? It's a, it, it's kind of like uh, the. Now, well, it, both episodes are in uh, the same season. Oh, okay, are they? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both episodes are in the same season. All right, yeah. But no, uh, before that though is wrong, Chris. <laughs> no, don't. He's like, all right, Cap. You got to know when to hold them, and you got to know when to vote. Be like Kenny Rogers. That was in 2020. <laughs> that, that was not one of the moments, sir. That was not. <laughs> About to be like Tony Iommi, missing the tips of your fingers. <laughs> Learn to play now, motherfucker. Fuck. Can, can you? Admit- can you invent heavy metal again? <laughs> what are you going to call it now? Diamond? Huh? Yeah, pussy. <laughs> but but actually, probably one of my favorite Boomhauer episodes. Dang old love. Oh. He falls in love with Marlene. This is yep. one of the this is one of the few uh, Boomhauer centric episodes. The problem is he ran into a girl that's just like him. Yeah, a yep. casual sex. <laughs> and I think that's what I really like about it. It's the Laura first. Yeah. It's the first time we actually see gr- a character growth in Boomhauer. He gets yeah. his heart broke. Yeah. It's like we actually see a human side of him for once. It's, and because you, you start out not really liking him in the episode. Because it all focuses on his, uh, you know, his promiscuity. And even Peggy says, well, well he's, because, not getting, he's not getting any younger, but the women are. <laughs> well, it, well, you start out not really liking him in the episode because he takes Bill's girl. That's yeah. the one where Bill's like trying to oh, uh, fall. He's like trying to get the, the jogger. Ice. Yeah, that's and, right. And even and even Bobby's getting affected by it. You know, it's like he was dating the ice cream girl. I was going to get ice cream all <laughs> yeah. the time, and then fucking Luann's just like, "You're never having ice cream again." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's like it, you start out really not liking him, but then again, exactly what Chris says, he met a girl like him, where yep. all of a sudden she was buck wild and everything else, and then she was just like, "Why are you still here?" Yeah. <laughs> the next morning and shit like that was just like treating him like he usually was treated but he wound up falling in love with her and went to go propose to her and she already had another guy there <laughs> and they were both like get the fuck out you hillbilly <laughs> yeah in so many words and it was just an interesting I liked it because from that moment you saw him uh, go fully down in the dumps Dale and Hank are trying everything they can because Bill is just standing back the entire time because he's been hating on Boomhauer the whole episode. Yeah, he's just standing back ignoring him, and finally they like take him to the crossing guard and everything and take him back and they're like lunging him into the bed and everything and you see Bill just like standing in his yard just like with this big old fucking frown on his face and they're just like come come on you know Boomhauer the son there you can do it and you just he'll hear Bill. St- storm into Boomhauer's house. He just goes, amateurs. Like that picks them up and just both bolting back out of the house again. And they're just like, and like, I, about what, like what he did with Bobby. Yeah. And then one of my favorite lines, Bill and, uh, I mean, uh, Hank and Dale look at each other and go, thank God we're married. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bill actually gives them a really good pep talk. Yeah. And it's just like, for once, it's like out of all the shitty, it's like, that's the, those are the moments that's hard for me to hate on Bill. It said that was a really good pep talk that he gave Boomhauer. And then through that, Boomhauer did something really cool and kind of out of his character, but he kind of kept moving forward. What did Bill say to him? 
Oh, just basically like, you know, look at me. Pick you your know. fucking self up. Yeah. Pick yourself up, you know, wash off half of that cologne and go get in some girls, some strange girl's bed again, you motherfucker. In so many words, you know. It's a, Don't I, be like me. Yeah, I know heartache, but, you know, we, we all see that, you know, tunnel. You know, we, we just got to get out of it, all that shit. But, no, but he does a really cool it. thing at the end, which is he goes back to the ice cream girl and legit apologizes to her. Yep. And it was just like, oh, that that's kind of cool. Yeah. And and that was that's why I think I and enjoyed that episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's something I kind of enjoyed about that episode is that you saw an actual little bit of growth from Boomhauer. Because Boomhauer is, is a character that's hard to write because of his... Uh, because of the way he talks, there's not really any way uh, you can write a, a lengthy narrative on Boomhauer, but uh, but uh, you could write episodes on his, you know, the few characteristics that are familiar at this point, which aren't mm-hmm. a lot still. Yeah. So I, I at least like that one. What did you think of that one, Chris? It was okay. It was a Boomhauer episode is very weird because yeah. before this one, there was that Patch Boomhauer mm-hmm, episode mm-hmm. with Matthew McConaughey. Yep. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> Or no, not Matthew McConaughey, Brad Pitt. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's fucking weird. That's later on, I think. Yeah. But no, yeah, I, I, I like this one. And again, especially because you got to see Mima. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Which is basically Mama, Mama Boom Howard. Yeah. What, Mima? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see her earlier during the Thanksgiving episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, Mrs. Boom Howard. Hey, 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 But yeah, and then rounding off the season, uh, did, did they? Does this season last two years almost? It's a lot of episodes. Well, yeah, I know it's a lot. Yeah, it of episodes. starts in two thousand one. Okay, yeah, I did. Never mind. I don't know what I was saying. But yeah, returning Japanese. Oh yeah, another cotton episode. Yes, yeah. but a very very good one. I think part one and two is how they rounded off the season. Yeah. Now, the whole point of uh, Cotton going to uh, Japan was to uh, reunite with. Is that his, the his, last remaining uh, soldiers from? Uh, no, it, it, so, so there's a lot of layers. He's all right, so the beginning was he was it was a part of a television series because where, Peggy wanted to get a free vacation. Yeah, well, you that's, how they, the that's how they get tagged along. Cotton was going because a television series was going to film soldiers getting medals from the Japanese government. Mm-hmm. And see the way uh, I understood, and then there was going to be a formal apology, right? See the way I understood the way that part worked was because Peggy booked the trip, word got out. That's why it was happening because she because remember she kept trying just to submit a bunch of different things so they could get trips, and, and the editor was like, "Yeah, we hadn't heard that one before." She's like, "Uh, okay, what about a trip to Spain, and we can do that?" And he's like, mm, "Try yeah. again," and then like she makes up that thing, and she's like, "What about a war hero?" That's this, that, and the other, and, and then that's what winds up getting them the trip to Japan. Yeah. And I think because she worked at the newspaper, they sent the information to Japan. Yeah, well, like I said, and they okay. met them there by ambush, almost surprised, yeah. because Peggy was supposed to be the one doing the interview, and yeah. that's why he was just like, "I'm not doing no questions in, in, this, uh, in any time right now." All that bullshit. Yeah. And that's when it kind of devolves a little bit because there is going to be a ceremony. With, yeah. Uh, with the. Uh, the leader of Japan. There's no mm-hmm. emperor of Japan anymore. That shit doesn't exist. Yeah. But um, the prime minister of Japan. Mm-hmm. And but Cotton doesn't see it that way. He still sees it as the emperor of Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and he agrees to do it just so he could spit the dude's face. Yep. The only hang up is Cotton fucked a woman and left. It left her pregnant after mm-hmm. war. So, and this kind of works into the timeline actually because it would have been 1945 yeah and he would have left about 1946 mm-hmm. and then he would have came home met hank's mom and then hank's probably born in like 1952 yeah so janichiro is almost a decade older yeah. than hank mm-hmm. which i think is hilarious yeah because <laughs> they look exactly alike but but i thought it was cool though because originally he uh at the beginning of the episode uh bobby was the first one that noticed the girl yeah, and he was just like, "Who's the girl?" And he's and he was just like, "Oh, someone I knew back from the war." Yeah, and he's just like, "Was it someone you killed?" Some, and he was some just like, "War bride." Uh, <laughs> and he was just like, "Yep, yeah, killed her husband. Took her, took the photo." You know, yeah. and it's like that that kind of thing it was just very aloof. And that oh yeah, that was the other thing too. He was supposed to go back to apologize to her for killing her husband. Yeah. That's what the whole thing was. And then eventually Hank finds out. He's like, "Wait a minute, you didn't kill this girl's husband." 
you were in love with her because he's like trying to put yeah, the... Yeah, she was a nurse. Uh-huh, because he was like trying to put the shoe polish on his hair and all this other bullshit. Yeah. And then at that point, that's when he realizes because he walk, he's like, well, I'll go with you, you know, might as well kind of thing. They show up, knock on the door, and exactly what you said, Junichiro answers the door and they both kind of look at each Whoa. other and they're like, uh... The exact yeah. same facial reaction. Hi. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, David Carradine does his voice. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's kind of funny because what does Janichiro Work. do for a living? Works on robots. And? Robot accessories. Yep. <laughs> David Carradine, rest in peace. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just talk about MASH and all them motherfuckers are dead, too. <laughs> and uh, to kind of uh, jump to the end of the episode a little bit, only just so we don't forget it. We can talk about the rest of it, though. But my favorite joke is they started out at the very beginning in episode one. So they open up the door to the uh, hotel and they're like, oh, my God, this is so small. small. He's like, like, well, they're small people. Yeah. And Bobby is like sleeping on the desk and he's just like, I can't sleep. And he's like, tries getting up and his foot, of course, slips through the desk and he like falls and his funny little yep. slip gag. At the very end of it, though, they're about to leave and they're like, yeah, I mean, because the, they're like, I hope you really enjoyed your stay. And they're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a little cramped, but, you know, so it was, it was, a it little was cramped. nice. And, yeah, and they're like, like yeah. And they're like, what do you mean oh i hope you didn't stay in the foyer the entire time and just opens up this thing beautiful skyline view and all this and a rotting fruit basket all this shit (laughs) (laughs) he found him a little japanese girlfriend too didn't you the b plot you know what's funny you know what other show does that gag Mm. king of the i mean uh simpsons what come on tisharama Really? When he moves in with Bender. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. And he's like, because he presses it. He's he's like sleeping right next to Bender. Uh-huh. It's, 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 it's a like, closet. Oh, you're sleeping in my closet. Yeah. No, <laughs> motherfucker. It's the entrance way to the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, not as up on my future Rama knowledge. Oh, it's a that's good a, show. That's a, that's a good episode. That's though. a good one. Because the whole time he's hanging out with Bender, and then they go back to Bender's place, and it's a closet, mm. and like. A robot just needs to stand there and fall asleep. Right. And he's a giant piece of metal, so Fry has nowhere to go. And he's just like, what the fuck? And then halfway, like almost almost to the end of the episode, they realize that, oh, fuck, there's a button that opens the secondary door mm-hmm. of the back wall. And, the back and it's wall like this huge, like, Batman-like apartment. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, you didn't know about that? Was it one of those? Yeah, and Bender's like, why the fuck would I go in there? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, baby. <laughs> But Shut yeah, up, baby. I know it. But yeah, Bobby's all about some uh, dance, dance revolution. Uh, yes, yes, he finds himself a little girlfriend over there. That yeah. was so cute. Because I love Cotton. Dancing? Because that's when Colin uh, Cotton Cotton uh, acknowledges that shit. He's like, "Oh, you found you a girl, huh? I hear you, Bobby." Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 it was on the cab ride home, and, uh, and you see Hank's Bobby like, just kind of looking out the but window. He tells Hank, he's like, "Hank, let him go." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's just kind of looking out the window. He's like, "What? What's up with you, Bobby?" And he's just like, "Oh, nothing." He's like, "Oh, did you find you found you a girl?" And he just kind of gives that little smirk, and he's just like, "Do you say bye to her?" He's like, "No, I." Or he said something. He's like, "To get you a kiss or something like that." And Bobby was like, "No, I didn't even get to say goodbye to her." And he was just like, "What?" And he's just like, "Go this way." Uh, he's like, yep. "Stop the fucking cab!" And he's just like, "Bobby, I understand heartbreak. You got to go out there and you got to tell her bye right now, like that." And, and that was just such a cute moment because again, there's That's very. Few yeah, moments, yeah. yeah, and there's very few moments you see that humanity in uh, Cotton, and you know he went through a big journey in that episode because he eventually didn't spit on the um, leader's no. face and everything else. He accepted his medal and everything yeah. else, and I had a nice little send off with um, the uh, baby mama. He wasn't a complete hero in him. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't a complete piece of shit in this yeah, episode. Do, I do uh, like how Hank... Like, I was going to say, we'll get to that one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like... Uh, but, but he had this pretty good little arc and to kind of round it off with him kind of passing that on to Bobby gives such a horrible, wretched character a little bit of heart. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little. Okay. Just a little. Because in a few episodes later, he dies. <laughs> yes. But... um. But yeah, the the situation with Hank and Genichiro trying to find Cotton so that he doesn't yeah. spit on the. But, but, uh, but that that is, he tries to like Hank is happy. Yeah. To have a brother, he's so excited. Yes. And Genichiro's like, I don't want the nothing hill to do with brothers. you. He's like, I don't want nothing to do with you, motherfucker. I'm not a hill. Yeah. No, my dad is this guy over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the and, guy who and raised me. Interesting. An interesting political commentary because he's because. Uh, uh, 
even Cotton was just like, oh, I see you're happily remarried, you know, this, that, and the other. And she goes, oh, yes, he was the only one willing to marry a woman out of wedlock that had a son. Yeah. And it's just like such an interesting little commentary yeah, on their it. climate and everything and like how ugly he was and everything yeah. else. And it's just like, but, but it's like, it's not even like in Japan, like mm-hmm. culturally, the, the, it's like, hey, it's a fucking women free for all over there because yeah. me and are getting married in Japan right now. Which is hilarious. <laughs> like so, all those guys over there, no one's getting married. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Yes, yeah, so I, I just thought that was also kind of an because they don't they don't do too many like directly he, political things, but that was kind of a little slip in that was like Ooh, just real I, subtle. Too. I think it's hilarious that he asked Junichiro because he's excited a little bit. It is. And so Junichiro, do you think they'd ever have a robot powered by propane? No, no, <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, <laughs> but okay. uh, but he but, but then, maybe but he realizes what's going on he's like but it could happen mm-hmm. and they go on the look they go on the out out take yes. a look for it, and he's like man i could really go for a beer and janitra goes like two steps back and <laughs> like it's a vending machine here you go yep so just bring beer <laughs> he's and like it, they put beer in a vending machine yeah because we're not all assholes to get drunk and drive and beat the fuck out of each other <laughs> and, and it's cool Texas. because it's like it's Hank, not Texas shoot shoot howdy howdy <laughs> <laughs> because it's like it's cool because Hank learned that part and then like literally a few scenes later they're trying to work their way through the crowd and Janichiro is like you know every time he bumps into so many bows to him and all that shit and then they get yep. up to the ticket counter and he goes this is not a question for the ticket counter it is a question for the check in counter so we must go to the check-in counter. Yeah. Hank's just like, oh, God damn it. He goes into the check-in counter. He talks to that person. He turns around. He's like, well, what did he say? That this is not a question for the check-in counter. We must go ask the ticket That's counter. Right. He's just like, no, you have to say, I'm going to kick someone's ass. He's like, but no, that is not polite. He goes, Janichiro, sometimes you have to be a little impolite. Uh, yeah. and, and then he's like, I will kick at your ass. And then all of a sudden he gets the information he yeah. needs. He's just like, oh. But uh, Janitra, Janitra's strategy worked too because uh, it kind of goes back to the whole uh, King of the Hill episode where they're selling grills. Mm-hmm. Because remember, he gave, he gives his information to this old guy that's walking by. Yep. And then he gets like a, a tingle, beeper, like a beeper yeah. message saying, hey, the, this guy said he saw our dad that uh-huh. we're going this way which I love that yeah. like, that's a Hank Hill move that is because remember because Hank uses it against Bobby during the propane grill off thing yep yep, yep keeps, God, yeah, I the, love it the next season yep but yeah, so I I think that was a great way to end off the season was uh, with that little two parter because it again you you got to see like what Chris was saying Hank all excited about you know have a little you know a big brother and you know yeah. all this other stuff you got to see a little bit of humanity I, I and I uh, cotton I hate that you don't see him again yeah yeah kind of like you don't see um, Luann's daddy mm-hmm. I don't like that like, yeah there's there was still plenty of fresh ideas in this season for all the characters yeah. That it didn't feel like, uh, like we've kind of mentioned briefly uh, about later seasons, kind of getting more ridiculous with their plot lines because uh, they're running out of interesting things to do with these characters. Yeah, yeah but, but that's just going to naturally happen. And you got to remember, this but, is right now. It's two thousand two. Family Guy had just got canceled. Mm-hmm. Fox's animation has gone kind of wonky a little bit because now yeah. they have just The Simpsons and then Futurama. Yeah. Because I remember when the first episode came out of that, I watched that. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you got to deal with other content that's coming out around this time that has to be kind of a little bit more sensitive after and, 9-11. And, pl- and plus, also, they're dealing with stuff like Comedy Central with South Park by yeah. this point. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, yeah, South Park in 2001. Mm-hmm. They is, were a major. They were, they were in their fifth season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were this kind was of right around the, This was right after the movie, too, I think. Yeah, yeah. so you got them... Uh, cable changed a lot mm-hmm. and then you got uh 24 oh god yeah. came out on fox and that was the show I'm, that was my brother's favorite show i remember jack bauer mm-hmm. waterboarding some fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna throw water on you and hook your testicles to a fucking car battery so i'm gonna kill I'm gonna fight the terrorist by becoming a goddamn terrorist <laughs> <laughs> yeah I will light you on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Put you out, then light you on fire again, motherfucker. <laughs> With 12 minutes left. <laughs> yeah. Ding, ding. Uh-huh. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Then they made him president in another show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> same network, I think. Yeah, same fucking network. <laughs> but yeah, season six of King of the Hill, I'd say it's a pretty strong one. I'd say it's I a good so. one. I wouldn't say it's an absolute favorite season, but there it's are many. Worthy. Yes, there there yeah. are there are many episodes that I will go back and revisit again, and just like Chris said, very meme worthy. <laughs> and like I was saying, just uh, as the kids say, still felt dank, dank. 
but yeah like i was saying it still felt pretty fresh and uh mm-hmm. we kind of see uh you know, everybody's just kind of you know uh these characters really well at this point and um uh, there's but you're still finding surprises with them yeah, yeah it's it's such a good show it is well i would say this has been another good episode of the couch potatoes for this week figure we can kind of go ahead and wrap this up here i've been alex dang old cap and, that's my purse and chris do you have any sort of final thoughts for us oh man i've been thinking about that now. good luck out there i will say that when this cover when this episode been mm-hmm. when we're recording good yeah. luck out there and i hope we're, we're still kicking by the time this thing airs <laughs> i know that fuck any final thoughts for the season for the season not the best but it's like if it, in the top 10 yeah it's it's probably like a number three like it is a great season yeah like, we found out a lot but after this it kind of tapers a off silly a if you're a fan when you're a fan of the show it kind of tapers off after this yeah uh, but i'm still looking forward to you know talking shit about right. season seven eight nine and then eventually 13 where con goes nuts <laughs> <laughs> well until then we'll see you then